Alright, so uh, welcome to my uh, DK64 101% commentated run. Uh, this run is going to be sort of a guide for people wanting to learn the category. I'll be treating it like any other run I do, so I'm not going to do anything intentionally slower or stop to explain things. I'm just going to try to explain everything as I'm going and hopefully I get through everything that I can and I am streaming right now so I have a chat that I'll be responding to hopefully people will ask me questions for things to talk about throughout the run uh, so I guess first here you just do the training barrels because you need to do all the training barrels in order to be able to buy moves at Cranky's so no skipping training barrels. 56 is optimal for that, but that was bad. And I'm gonna try to get through all of the like important explaining stuff right away here, so that if you're lazy and are watching this in the future and don't want to spend the whole six hours watching, hopefully you get something out of watching like the first ten minutes here. And yes, chat, please do not lag my laptop by spamming. Ask meaningful questions. So, let's see, these, yeah, the training barrels are really straightforward. I don't really need to talk about these at all. So, I guess the main thing, if you're going to take away anything from this entire run, listen to what I'm about to say right now. This is the most important thing, most important advice I can give to anybody learning 101. And that is... Do not try to do all of the hard things while you're learning the first time. There are a bunch, there's so many glitches in DK64 that it can be overwhelming if you try to do everything right when you're learning. So I have the, I have a written guide that I encourage you to follow along with this video if you're learning. Uh, it will be linked in the description or however you're watching this video. And the written guide will have lots of backups explaining like what to do instead. So right there I just did a glitch called Swim Through Vertical Walls. And all you do is after diving you you see up, exit see up, and swim forward. It only works when you're facing certain directions. Uh, and I'll probably explain that more later on. But yeah, Swim Through Vertical Walls is really simple. Then over here, I'll be doing Swim Through Shores, so I dive and mash B. So all I'm doing there is pressing Z once, then B over and over, and I jump into loading zone like that. And you need, you need to visit the Banana Fairy right here in, in order to get the Shockwave ability to get rainbow coins, and the camera to take pictures of fairies. So, okay, important thing right here, if you are learning 101 for the first time, I recommend you go take that fairy picture at the island to the left there, on that little green island. Go take that fairy picture, but instead I only picked up three crystals there, because I don't need the fairy picture, I can do everything I need to with three crystals, but there's a rocket barrel section in caves that I recommend you have lots of crystals for if you're not comfortable with it, so go take that fairy picture if you need to. Right here I'm visiting KLMZ to open up Jungle Japes. And I have not hit any Banana Port warps yet because I will be doing a cutscene skip later, so yeah, don't hit any warps. Why is chat dead? Ask me questions. Ah, uh, so let's see what else. Okay, so I have there's the guide and the route, which are two different written documents that I have made. The guide, well, okay, the route is what I use when I am doing runs. So, like, it's the exact route that you'll see in my world record video. Oh, right there, I just got the dance skip. Nice. By touching the loading zone and go banana at the same time. Oh, I, I haven't even been splitting. Oh my gosh. 
Okay, I guess we're not splitting this run. <laughs> Can they scroll up and chat? Okay, so right here, this is Bush Push. You just turn in the wall and do that. Right here, you kick onto the warp, skip the cutscene. Then you do swim through vertical walls right here, so you dive, look a little to the right, exit first person, and get this bone banana. And sorry, I have Twitch alerts off for the stream, so post all you want, but the alert is disabled. Actually, Bush Push is not, I guess it's not that easy when you're learning. It takes a bit of practice. There's many other Bush Push explanations out there. So if Push Push is giving you troubles, you, you can always just hit the switch and go through the intended way. It's really not that much slower. You can still do the warp cutscene skip. Ooh, and right there I just got a tech skip on the battle crown by mashing Z. Uh, can I do what, Dan? Yeah, battle crowns. You don't need to do anything. Don't fall off like conditioner likes to do. Oh my gosh. If I fell there, I would have reset. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna reset this though, no matter what happens. Unless something so terrible happens that I just have to. Alright, so after you buy DK's gun here, you climb this tree, and a few things you can do with trees, if, if you press A right before you get to the top, you can do that and sort of, I think it's called a tree jump, that balloon, use bananas, it's important to hit warp 2 right here, you'll be using this 5 hours from now, probably, get, uh, did he smell banana? So I don't know if I finished explaining the difference between the guide and the route. So the guide is really beginner friendly. It has, it probably has more information than I'm talking about, honestly, because I'll forget to mention all the backups in this. So yeah, if you're learning, use, okay, line yourself up. Okay, I actually got that jump. That jump is pretty difficult on VC. On N64, you can turn your camera behind you and to cause lag, and that jump is free. But on VC, you have to be... It's a, it's a pretty precise jump. Miss the balloon, because I'm good at aiming. And last switch. Uh, this run's probably ahead of my PB right now, honestly. But I'm thinking I'm going to keep splits off the whole run just to not be distracted by them. And instead focus on explaining things. Okay, so, it, so yeah, if you're a lazy person who wants to just do a run of 101, I recommend you you pull up the guy that I've made, you try to follow that the best of your ability. When you get to something that you don't know how to do, pull up this video, hopefully I explain it. And then once you're comfortable and have done like a couple runs with the guide, I suggest taking the route I've made, which is the condensed version. It's way easier to read while you're doing runs because, oh my gosh, don't be like me. The route's a lot more condensed and easier to read, so you can even 
make a copy of the Google Doc yourself and then change the parts of the routes where you may do easier strats. So what I did there is an orange dive. You throw an orange right before you enter the water and go down to the bottom. Those three coins are important, you need all three of them. And my Diddy's gone. Alright, here I'll be doing swim through vertical walls again. If there's anything you want to take away from swim through vertical walls, it's if it doesn't work, little look a little more to the right. That's all I have to say. Look more to the right if it doesn't work. Right here, I'll try to do a dance skip like that, taking damage into the golden banana, the balloon, and first boss fight. So now to get into these boss fights, you can do two things: either ledge clip or moon kick. Uh, for beginners, it actually might be easier to try and do the ledge clip instead of this moon kick. I know when I was learning, it took me a long time to get comfortable with that moon kick, but most runners will say the moon kick is easier. So it's basically personal preference, and I'll go over ledge clips more when I get to another one. But you just moon kick on that slope and go through the part of the wall that I did. And I would like to dedicate this run to Tikiskan, who really needs it. Hopefully he will learn 101 properly now. My voice is gonna be gone. Yeah, I haven't... I probably haven't talked this much in a long time. Okay, uh, I'm bad. So I guess if you really want to do this boss fight optimally, you don't want to get slow rolls, which, I don't know, I mean I don't want to demonstrate them. Maybe I'll get a slow roll there. Yeah, that's a slow roll, that's bad. And I, I didn't try placing the barrel there in front of them in the quarter mode. In NLE you can get away with being reckless, but I'm going to play it safe. Oh, this is so slow. <laughs> Alright, so if this was Hipster, he would be out of Japes by now. Sub 13, but I'm slow. There's your first key. And that's all of Japes. So now instead of swimming straight to Kalemzi, it's actually faster to go hit these warps over here. You need five and one. And very important, you need to get the rainbow coin before turning in the key. It's way faster. So the rainbow coin is directly in back. Do not go on the little lower part or else you will trigger the cutscene. Then you just hold B to get rainbow coins. And then you turn in the key from back here, and after the cutscene you will be warped to the entrance, which is why it's faster to get the rainbow coin first. Use warp one, and coming up is a very difficult trick on VC. Unfortunately, there isn't really any backup to this, and this is honestly might be the hardest trick of the run on Wii U Virtual Console. So, this is giving you trouble. That's to be expected. Don't get discouraged. You'll, you'll get it eventually once you get past it. 
feel really good. So you just you have to moon kick on the slope. A, B, 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 B. Then you grab onto the ledge right about there. And that was a horrible explanation. And hopefully sometime in the near future I'll make an actual Caves Early tutorial because I could talk for 10 minutes about that trick. Now you're entering Crystal Caves. This is a B-Locker skip where you jump backwards into him like I did, then you turn and slap in. I have a link in, t in the guide that explains B-Locker skips more. And then Caves is going to be a pretty short trip, we just have to get a couple things. This movement is awful. <laughs> oh my- DK! Okay, the rock cutscene is going to start before I even get to the blueprint now. Yeah, usually I can pick up the blueprint before this cutscene even starts. But there's no skipping this cutscene, there's absolutely no way, you have to watch it. Uh, so, I'm picking up six crystals here. If you got the fairy at the beginning, you don't need to worry about crystals since you're probably at like 20. But if you didn't get the fairy, which I don't recommend if you're a new runner, get the fairy, it'll make your life easier. You can do this out of bounds on five crystals, but six is way safer, so I usually get six. And you want to get a couple of these bananas now, and straight to Cranky to buy moves. So first you get Simeon Slam, which will automatically kick you out of Cranky, and go back in and buy DK's actual moves. Ricky, please read the FAQ in the title. Actually, I probably should explain this a bit more, so the route that I'm doing right now in this run, the overall route itself is beginner friendly, but I will be doing a couple tricks in this run that I do not recommend beginners do, and I will explain the alternatives to them, and the written guide will like say exactly what to do instead. Like so far I've talked about the fairy, there's not really any other differences you could have done so far. So this Baboon Blast is pretty awful. There is one thing I can mention about if you fall... If you fall before getting the first two bunches, well, you're just bad. If you fall after getting... after getting the first two bunches, then you can actually take the middle... There's three barrels at the very start. And hold on, let me let me finish this first. I need to focus. Okay, so there's three barrels at the very start. You, you want to take the far right one first to get all the bunches. If you fall after getting the first two bunches, then you can take the middle barrel as a shortcut. If you fall after getting all of the bunches, then you can take the far left barrel and skip almost all the way to the end. So yeah, there's that if you fall part way through. This mini game is pretty difficult in VC. I almost just failed it there. On N64, it's really easy, and if you fail it, you're kind of bad. But yeah, if you fail it on VC, that's okay. It's difficult.
please hit him? Alright. Do not pause. If you pause during this time where you're falling, uh, you won't get the golden banana, so don't pause during that. Now, time to buy Diddy's moves. So now, uh, coming up after this, I'm going to go straight into Diddy's rocket barrel and do an out-of-bounds section to get to his blueprint. This is the section where if you got the fairy at the start, it's really helpful because you don't really need to worry about your crystal count. So this out of bounds is honestly not that difficult. Don't be scared by it. Okay, three seconds off gold there. So get in the barrel. You fly over directly above the baboon blast platform, which is right about here. I got the weird camera, but you want to follow the level. So you go to the right first, you follow the level, and I, I'm actually out of bounds right now. So you just stay in the middle of the level, follow it over here until you see it funky. Then there's this little alcove over here where the blueprint is, where you want to fall down. But out of bounds really isn't that difficult. All you're doing is going straight along the level until you get to Funky's. Then you go to the little circular area that I did. Okay, now this is where our route difference is. Uh, I recommend if you are learning, you hit warp 3 before entering Diddy's room here. So yeah, th this is in the written guide too. But I recommend hitting warp 3 before entering this room with Diddy. And then after you finish this room, you pause, exit, and leave. And then you're done with caves. But I'll be doing something different instead. Okay, I'll say that again. Hit warp 3 before entering this room with Diddy. And get this golden banana balloon and pause, exit. Instead, I'll be, some I'll be doing something stupid that hardly saves any time. Yeah, you would pause exit right there. But this is the slightly slightly faster to get DK's golden banana here in the first visit to caves. But because I only have one melon, this room is really difficult. And that's why it's probably wiser to wait until you have two melons in the second visit to caves. It really doesn't lose that much time to do it in the second visit to caves, but I'm stubborn and like to do it this way. And I just got a first try moon kick, so that moon kick is honestly really difficult. I'm somehow kind of consistent at it. This part is honestly harder than the moon kick, not dying. Since if you touch the walls, it's instant death. There you go. Okay, done with caves. If you're Diddy, you would tag DK before leaving the lobby. And you just go straight to Aztec. No need to hit that warp, too. Oh, and shoutouts to Shadow Linky. Sorry, I was busy explaining things there, but shoutouts to Shadow Linky for being the PAL world record holder in 101%. 
So first thing to do in Aztec is get DK's blueprint in here. Pretty simple. Oh, I guess I haven't even mentioned this yet, but probably should have mentioned this at the very start, but wow, he hit me. But this run, I'm, I will do my best to explain things for both N64 and VC. The route is like basically the same for both, so yeah, you can learn from this no matter what version you're running on. Well, I guess if you're running on PAL, then you're just screwed. So there is a cutscene skip here you can do on N64 if you throw some oranges, you can go through the wall, but you don't really need to worry about that. Get this rainbow coin first. Really important that you get this, because Diddy does not have enough coins to buy his guitar until you get that. Hit that warp one, that's important. Conditioner, what is your question? Yeah, so I encourage chat to ask meaningful questions if you have any about the category. Now's the time to ask. I'm like already losing my voice, it's been 20 minutes. After you buy Dita's guitar, come over to this tree, and rocket barrel to the blueprint. You can jump out of Diddy's cartwheels, like that, and then don't do... Okay, yeah. I like to do that movement to get down here. And I guess if you wanted to, you could shoot this balloon after the temple if you're scared about the door closing. Now it's time to free Tiny. Now if you've watched other categories of this game, you might be wondering why I'm not doing a ledge clip to get to Tiny faster, and that's because you need to do bananas here. So it's faster to just do it the intended way. Oh, is killing the Kasplat with the gun ever faster? Yes, it is faster with... Okay, I am so bad at walking across this tongue. Like, okay. So with DK, Chunky, and Diddy, it is faster to shoot Kislats to kill them. Uh, I do not use my gun on that Kislat with Diddy because it takes a second to take your gun out after landing in Rocket Barrel, and it's really easy for the Kislat to knock you off during that time period of taking out your gun, so it's way safer to just do what I did with a little cartwheel. However, for Kasplats in general, with DK, Diddy, and Chunky, you want to shoot them. With Lanky and Tiny, you want to use your Shockwave ability. Good question. And I guess in that particular instance, I also am low on ammo sometimes, that's another reason not to. However, I don't think I have to shoot anything else before the next refill. Uh, and it is kind of important to be picking up crystals in here, especially if you waste it a lot in caves. Okay, yeah, it's not that hard to backflip up here. But yeah, throughout all of Aztec here, you want to be picking up crystals, since there is a pretty heavy rocket rail section near the end. Oh, I th I'm not even explaining what I'm doing. So you hit the O first there. And I'm pretty sure the stream just went down, so... Uh, looks like I'll be doing some editing to piece these back together.
Yeah, uh, hopefully it's back now. So what I did there is a slope reset to get up to Diddy's guitar platform. I can't... Okay, so I'm locally recording just the game on Amarek, but I can't look. I can't record on OBS and stream at the same time, or else my laptop lags. Or like, no, there's like visible frame drops of the stream. So, but I can just piece together the streams before I upload it to YouTube. Not that big of a deal. Okay, so I'll explain this again. You do the O first in the tiny temple because you can't hit the K if you try to do it first. It just doesn't work. And instead, you have to hit the O. F well, you can hit any of the N, G, or O to make the game think that the puzzle has already started. And then after hitting one of those letters, you can proceed to do the puzzle as intended. K, O, N, G. Nice banana. That banana does that. Okay, so you need to pay attention to what you're buying here. You need to buy Tiny's gun and one upgrade. Make sure she has 15 coins leaving here. I got all four under the tag barrel. Because she needs 15 to be able to buy monkey port. And I also hit warp three after going through that tunnel and getting the 10 bananas. That's also really important. Doing another monkey kick here to get into the boss. And this is a trick, which is kind of weird. It has many names, Dog a Donkey, Dog a Done Quick, Dog a Wintmore, whatever you want to call it. It's a very easy glitch, even if you've never run the game before. If you turned on your game right now and went and tried it, I guarantee you, you'd be able to get it really quickly. So, yeah, just do what I do. You need to dodge the barrels. There's five, or dodge the fireballs, there's five of them. Get in front of the barrel, pick it up, turn around in place, put the barrel down, and walk in front of it. And, oh my gosh. I, pro I haven't failed that in probably months. Yeah, that's what you do. You put the barrel down and stand in front of it. I promise you it's really easy, and failing it is very rare. Now right here, this is a banana push. You want to get as close to the edge of the banana as possible, like all the way to the left as far as you can without falling off, and then you just jump aerial backwards and you'll go through the wall. Alright, so it's faster getting a strong con here. Every single clip I do, or every single thing I've done so far is possible on the N64 version. So, uh, the only thing that 
DC can do that N64 version can't is take pictures of fairies through walls. So everything I do, you can do on N64. However, the reverse is not true. You cannot do orange clips on BC like you can on N64. So like I said, it makes more sense to do this guide on BC because everything I do here you can do on N64. So you, you don't need to worry about that. Although some of the fairy stuff you can't do on N64, but I'll talk about that when I get here, when I get there. VC is significantly faster than N64. Oh, clap traps are awful. Uh, it's kind of difficult to time it, so we just estimate 15 to 20 minutes. Oh yeah, I was busy explaining something else, but to get into the five door temple back there, all you do is roll and DK clips. So all you do is roll into the wall, and then you back clip into the loading zone. We roll into the slope anyway. Sometimes I forget that I'm going through walls, like they just aren't there. So you can shoot this balloon from right here, you wait a little, I shoot about there, then that. Alright, if you need to, grab some health from the melon crate directly below. I'm honestly gonna get health. Since it's not just this swim you have to do on this health, you have to do other stuff later. Yeah, so for that swim, you just swim through the wall, C up, leave C up, go through it, and you swim into Lanky's room. Okay, and you've probably noticed by now, if you're following along doing the route yourself, if you didn't get DK's Golden Banana at the end of Caves, like I said not to, you're going to be one Golden Banana off for a long time. So, the guide has the... What is your problem, DK? The guide has the correct counts if you're doing the beginner strats like I recommend. So yeah, just know that you're going to be one gold banana off until the second visit to caves. And yes, this is live. So I'm doing this run live. I'm talking to you live. Yeah, this is this is why I got health, because I would have died. And hey Dylan, nice to see you, but I guess, I don't know if commentated speedrun is the best way to call what I'm doing. Like, I'm just trying to record a run with commentary that explains how to do things so that when people are trying to learn 101, they have a better video to watch. So it's kind of like a tutorial, but like I, I didn't want to stop to explain everything. And then, if I'm doing a tutorial, I'd be worried about wanting to explain everything as best as I can. But with this, it's just, like, it's really informal. I'm just doing a normal run like I usually would while explaining things.
And then for tricks that I need to that require more explanation, I'll probably be making short little videos explaining them. Oh I mean, yeah, I, I didn't know like the correct like what to call this exactly. Do I call it a guide? A commentated run? A tutorial? So it is important to buy Lanky's moves first, because he bought Super Simeon Slam there. And he has more coins than Tiny, so he can afford it. These three banana diddy. Get some crystals there if you need them. 16 is, I think, plenty. Those bananas. Okay, then right here. Do the gongs in this order. Trust me. It may seem slower, but you do the gongs in this order because you want to end on the gong back here. What you do, get next to it, chimpy charge facing this way, then jump aerial. And I may have missed the golden banana, but you want to land right in the middle. Okay, I still got it. That gong in that corner is really easy to get the chimpy charge off of, so that's why I end on it. I'm gonna get one bunch there. And it's beetle race time. I guess I haven't really talked about movement with all the Kongs, have I? So, I mean, it's pretty simple. Rolling as fast as the DK, long jumping as fast as with everybody else. Then Diddy, you can cartwheel jump, which is basically the same as long jumping. However, it's kind of faster for little reasons. I will not be doing Beetle Race Skip because it only, saves, it only saves 10 seconds on Wii U. It may save a little more than 64, but I don't think it's worth it, so I don't do it. Instead, we get to do this race the intended way. And you always want to do a kick slide at the beginning there, like I did, to hit the beetle to get ahead of him. And then you can just stay ahead of the beetle the whole time, and it's easy. It may take you a couple tries to learn the course where all the coins are. You really want to get as many coins early on as you can, and then you can really just yellow the end and go fast. Like, this has been pretty good with coins so far. I don't think I've missed many, if any. Oh, there's one I missed. And you can jump in those tunnels to go really fast. I didn't really jump much. Yeah, I'm, I have way too many coins. I went too slow on that curve coming down. Okay, so right here, you want to let go of the control stick before you hit the bottom, and if you hold Z, you'll do a super slide like that. That was actually a really bad super slide. Yeah, for that super slide at the end, you can't be holding any direction on the control stick, and when you transition from the slope part to the flat part, you just want to be holding Z, that's it. And I didn't have much speed there, so that's why that, that slide was actually pretty wimpy. And, yeah, th there is an actual Beetle Race skip for that race. You can check out... Signas or Tudos' PBs. You see that on the Wii U version. Otherwise, I think Xenernicus and Bismuth do it on N64.
Okay, in this section, you're on a kind of a timer. You want to get to Diddy's switch over here as fast as possible. And you want to try to get these four bananas on the stairs before the vulture reaches the platform, so... I should be just fine, yeah. I got all four of them. Then you say yes to the vulture here. Don't say no. For some reason, people think you're supposed to say no. No. You say yes, they can do the race. If you didn't get all four of those bananas, that's okay. You can get them later in a couple minutes. Uh, I like to... I'm really bad at this, but you can, like, shoot this guy a couple times for during the race. I've hardly practiced that. That's something I need to practice more, is being able to feed him multiple times during this race. Yeah, I'll probably put this run on the resources of the speedrun.com. Oh, and I broke that watermelon crate during the race because it's possible to land on it while you're getting the bananas, so breaking it is just ultra safe, doesn't lose any time. The race is an auto scroller. So there's like just no risk of landing if you break the crate. So if you miss those four bananas, get them right now. But otherwise you enter the temple here. And I have eight extra crystals, so I was in no danger at all of running out. You don't need crystals anymore until the next fairy. There's a balloon here. It's really easy to forget. Do not forget that balloon. Really? Okay. And that's Aztec. Well, first visit. So now, hit these gongs. Get Tiny's bonus barrel here. This is a really fun mini game. Ooh, this is <gasps> really weird camera. Welcome to bonus so yeah, this mini game's awful. It's RNG. As who knows where the fly is gonna go. You can try and predict it. Okay, 42, that's really good for me. Uh, to the person that whispered me, no, I cannot send you a file to play this on Virtual Console. I have no idea how that even works. The game is $10 on the eShop. No idea how to send files. Okay, so now you want to get this fairy here. And you actually want to skip Tiny Sax Pad and save that for later. It only saves maybe one or two seconds, but it is faster to save it for later. Now it's factory time. Switch to Lanky. And uh, coming up is a pretty difficult section. So. This is something that is going to require a lot more explanation than I can give right now, but I'll do my best. Oh, 
How did I go through? Oh yeah, that yeah, that door leading in the factory doesn't exist. I always forget there's even a door there. Okay, so this is robot push. You want to lead the robot over to the corner, walk into the corner, and he'll push you out of bounds. Just do that, and yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna stop talking for a second because you need to listen. Well, I guess go under that gate. I missed it because I suck. Okay, listen. You should hear it. But I'm too busy talking. You should hear a gate noise, and that means you opened it. Now, what I was doing there is I was looking at a certain tag barrel light. It's the lowest one. I don't even remember how to. Oh my gosh. I honestly don't remember how to walk down this pipe. Okay. <laughs> So how I did that out of bounds is after I opened up the gate is you, you kind of just look straight forward if you were in front of the gate and you should see a tag barrel, a lower tag barrel light and you just walk straight towards that to get to Lanky's Going Banana. So yeah, I could honestly make like a 20 minute video explaining how to do that section, which I might do at some point. But yeah, that, that whole section I did there is fairly difficult, so don't get discouraged if it takes you a long time to learn. And make sure you have six coins heading up here. I got one after warp four, and I got one right there. But yeah, Linky's coin count is pretty important. I get his trombone, he should have three afterwards. Yeah, I've never played a Donkey Kong Country game. I guess something to point out about buying moves is you can hold A. It's like I'm holding A right now, and he'll buy the move. You don't need to mash A. Then, in general, you want to buy all cranky moves you can afford. I'm pretty sure that's the case everywhere. Yeah, it is. But for candy, you always just want to buy the instrument. Do not buy any further upgrades from candy. Unless for some reason you were so bad at this game you need a third melon, but please don't do that. Actually, being 100% serious, K. Rule is somewhat of a difficult boss fight, so if later on you do need to buy the third melon, I guess it's not the worst thing in the world. But yeah, you get your third melon from candy if you want. I have no idea if this route has enough coins, so you're on your own for figuring that out. That blooms really easy if you do my setup there, just you shoot it right when you leave. And there's a switch about here. Okay, and right here, I'm going to be doing a fairly difficult moon kick. I'm pressing A and just smashing B. Uh, you do not need to do that. I don't really know how much time it saves. The written guide has an alternative to doing that, so you can save this power sh shed section for later in the run if you don't want to do that moon kick. Because honestly, that moon kick takes a long time to learn when you're just starting, so I probably w wouldn't do it on my first run.
Like, the intended way to get here is just fall down from the R&D room, which I means not that slow. Okay, I need all the bananas in here. So then regardless if you did the power shed or not there, you're going to want to do the baboon blast. So either if you didn't do power shed there, do the baboon blast after you hit the switch. I almost was too low for that bunch. You can mash through that part. Just make sure you get all four bunches in there. There's a rainbow coin right here you need. And right here, immediately after you punch the switch, start, you keep holding Z and then you can mash C up to play your instrument during that cutscene and kill the bees. My movement is not optimal on these, I, have, I need to practice this section. But you can just jump down the side of that box and pick up the golden banana. Usually it takes me a little more setup than I did right there, but you just get on the very edge and jump down and you'll just pick it up. Welcome to bonus stage. This mini game is really straightforward, just get six coins. I guess in order to save my voice, I rarely talk this much, so I'm not gonna explain things that are just pure common sense. Like, you don't need me to uh, talk about this mini game at all. But there's a dance skip you can do here. Like to look straight forward. Oh, uh, that's that was not even close. Horrible example. I'm pretty sure my PB gets that. use DK here and you will be entering this boss fight twice. The You're entering with DK first and just pause exiting out. The reason for this is because when you enter the boss a second time with Tiny, it will skip the opening cutscene and be you'll just go straight into the boss fight. There is a long opening cutscene if you do not exit out like that. But anyways, I'm just going straight into arcade now. Oops, and you're supposed to be holding A there. I was holding start for some reason. And I'll do my best to PB on this tutorial, but... Okay, so arcade here is it's gonna it, it takes a while to get used to. All it takes is practice, learning what the barrels do where and everything. So I don't really know what to say. It, like it just takes practice to learn what to do. Uh, for 50 meters here, so I go up. Oh, okay. Already messing up. So since the fireball is on the left side, I'm going to the right side. And I'm still getting that cycle. If the fireball went down that ladder and kind of went over to the right side, then I would stay on the left side. Now for a 75 meter, I'm holding right and jumping right away. 
There's a jump I'm gonna do here, which I got. All it takes is practice. Uh, I was standing in pretty much the perfect spot. It does matter where you're standing on the platform before you even start the jump. You want to be kind of far back, but still able to make it. Then I have kind of a visual cue based on the platform coming down, but okay. So uh, fireballs didn't troll me there, but the the pat the route I'm doing for this stage is the same one I do every single time. Oh, this is really bad. I was not able to get many of the fireballs. Okay, that was, that was still fine though. Those fireballs were about to troll me. But yeah, the start of that round up to the hammer section, I do exactly the same every single time. And you want to try to kill as many fireballs as possible to send them over to the left side so you can clear out the right side while they're gone. The way I do 100 meter is not the fastest. You can watch the task to see the fastest, but what I do is pretty safe. And now you do it again for the Nintendo coin. Oh yeah, there is a timer for these stages. It's in the top right, you'll see it in a second, called the bonus. If it ticks down to zero, you actually, I think, die. Yeah, the bonus up there is at 6,000, it's going down. When it gets to zero, I think you die. But if if you're running out of time on these, you like really don't deserve to be a speedrunner. Although, okay, honestly, it is possible to run out of time on 75 meter if you're not doing the jump and waiting for the little fireball, but... Okay, the fireballs are going over to the right, so I'm staying on the left. And... okay, I'm good. Now, the jump is a... I think it's a bit harder here. Oh, oh my... okay! That fireball was too close for comfort. Okay, and we're gonna we're gonna see the slow way now. So that's the slow way to do this if you fail to jump. See, now I I, I gotta show off all the different strats. That was completely intentional. But I did jump a little late on the skip, so that's why I failed it. It's better to jump a little late than too early, because if you jump too early, you die. If you jump too late, you just land on the platform. The jump is still possible on the second round in 75 meter, you just have to jump earlier. That was not a perfect arcade by any means, I was probably still like slower than my PBR 30 seconds. Okay, now you enter Troffenskopf again and do key 3. And uh, you won't have to watch Mad Jack cutscene since you already skipped it. Oh, this is the first ledge clip, actually. And as you can see, they're kind of hard. So what you're doing on ledge clips... This is a common misconception. The C-upping itself is not what clips you. 
Okay, going in a C app does not allow you to get the clip. What is the camera doing? How you get ledge clips is by moving as little as possible and falling into a little crack that sends you out of bounds. And what C upping does is it buffers your movement so you can move as little as possible. So if you're good, you don't even need to see it for ledge clips, and you can just like inch your way forward and then eventually you'll clip. But if you fall off the platform without clipping, that means you went past the zone where you can clip. And uh, Mad Jack is a very complicated boss fight. He does the same... well, the number of jumps he does in a phase is predictable. He, it's 9, 11, 12, 13, 15 for the five phases. Okay, now he should be done now. And I can't even find it. Uh, I guess... I'm not even gonna try to explain how this fight works, honestly, but... Just don't fall. Really? What? Hello? See, I still don't even know how this fight works. Yeah, just just focus on not falling. Just yeah, don't fall. But something you can do with a camera is I'll try to show it off here. If you the camera will start out following Mad Jack, and you should see a little camera symbol in the bottom right. You don't see it right now is because I disabled that by pressing R. But if, you, if I were to press R again, you'd see a little camera symbol in the bottom right, and the camera would follow Mad Jack instead. Yeah, and I guess on N64, to lag reduce, you want to not look at him, but just don't worry about that at first. Just don't fall. Anything you can take away from watching that mess is don't fall. You don't need to hit warp 5 there in this route. So yeah, that gate that I opened with Lanky at the start of Factory while I was out of bounds, by walking under it with Lanky, you just walk under it with Lanky while you're out of bounds, it will open. That's the sound cue you're listening for, and then you can just pick it up with Tiny there. In older routes, you would have had to go buy Tiny's gun here, but don't need to in this route. You can go straight to her little spinning wheel. This is an easy backflip. Yes, Mad Jack is doable with every con, but... I recommend using Tiny in this category. Uh, so yeah, this wheel is kinda... It can troll you. That was pretty good for me, honestly. I 
think Lanky's the worst for Mad Jack. Chunky's jump aerial goes farther than you think. It's not that bad with him. Hipster actually used to do Mad Jack is Chunky instead of DK in his any percent runs because it was easier for him. So here you get balloon. Okay, or you missed the balloon. Now you will buy the remaining guns for everybody that doesn't have them yet, which is Lanky and Chunky. And Lanky should have exactly five coins here, so you can afford to buy homing ammo. And Chunky should have at least 8 coins as well. You can buy his gun and ammo belt too. Now ammo belt 2 isn't a required upgrade, because upgrades are not required on 101%, so all you need is the stuff on the main total screen, but trust me, you'd rather have 200 ammo than 100. Hardly waste any time to buy that. Chunky can kill the Lucas Flats in 5 hits, while takes DK and Diddy 8. Tiny Lanky way more, so you don't want to use your guns for killing them. So I'm really inconsistent when I take that fairy picture. Sometimes I get it, entering this room, sometimes leaving. Just do whatever works for you. You just need to get it at some point. Now he just hope the fairies at the top. My advice for fairy pictures is to don't hesitate. Just go for the picture. If you try to hesitate, the fairy is gonna move. So just go for it. This section of factory is honestly so simple that I doubt anybody is actually watching this part, that if you're watching this in the future, not live, you've probably skipped ahead of this part since it's really simple. Welcome to bonus stage. And yes, in DK's number game, you can get two numbers with one ground pound, but I have not been splitting. Yeah, I'm... Splits don't really matter, though. I just have my splits on screen, so I guess you can see where I split. Although, I do have all my splits on Splits.io, so you can download them if you want to split the same places that I do. Welcome to 
the bonus stage. So this minigame has some RNG, that's based on what positions the slots start on, but the slots themselves are always the same. So like on the first and third slots, the golden banana is always after the grape and coconut. For the second slot, it's always after the melon and pineapple, and for the last one, it's always after the pineapple and coconut. That's how I do that. And it's the exact same in the other two minigames in future levels. Okay, so... Pay close attention to what lanky bananas I'm getting here. And I will be doing a fairly recent find after this minigame to get to the battleground, but yeah, this game is really simple. You just hit the switches in the correct order without hitting the F key. I guess I haven't mentioned you can cancel out of your ground pounds. So uh, what I'm doing is after Lanky lands with the ground pounds, I'm pressing B then A. So you see him do his like B attack for a second and then he jumps. F key is never used in this mini game, so if you want to hear what it sounds like, go ahead and try pressing it yourself. Oh yeah, so if you're watching this guide and want to be good at DK64, you need to have mini oven in your chat. And I just did a glitch there without even explaining it, so hold on, I'll show this. So for this out of bounds, I look at the tag bar a little to the left. I go straight. Hope you don't inbounds. Yeah, it's good. And you navigate over to the battleground here. So to get out of bounds there, I w you go to where I was standing in between the two barrels. You jump, hold A, aerial, and hold back, and you'll go through the wall. Basically it. And yeah, if you want to be good at 101%, you need to have mini oven to think your phase Z emote in your channel. Or else there's no way you can ever get a real record. So. Like, it's honestly really disrespectful if you're watching this right now and you don't have any of it in your channel. Like, I'm not asking for your money or anything. All I want is mini oven awareness. Okay, so after the battleground, you need to get the rest of the bananas. One there, backtrack for the blueprint. Yeah, really straightforward. Thank you. 
So for tiny movement, her long jumps are fastest, but long jumps are limiting is that you kind of can only do them on parts where you're going straight. So you can do kick slide jumps instead for sections where you don't have room to long jump. Uh, so something you can do in this car race here is you can cheat. Show you in a little bit how you can cheat, but be careful with cheating because the mods on speedrun.com might reject your run if they find out you were cheating, but I like to get away with some cheating sometimes. Like that. Press A. You can cheat. Okay, shooting missiles isn't actually cheating, but yeah, shooting A shoots a missile. You can't hit the TNT barrels, but you can hit the dude here if he's ahead of you. But his rubber banding is makes it so you never really need to shoot him. You should always win, unless you hit a barrel at the very end. Alright, so now for the car race to do Chunky's toy monster section. And this Switch likes to be a s <laughs> this game. Uh, this route is called the Double Caves Route. It Yes, it's organic Kongs. The Kongs are all free organically, GMO free, no pesticides or any of that stuff. So, uh, this is called the Double Caves Route. It's what I recommend you use. There is a faster route that frees Kongs in Castle, but on both N64 and BC it has really difficult stuff at the beginning, so I don't recommend starting with that route, especially since it really doesn't save that much time to be worth it, in my opinion, unless you're going for a top time. Unlike my, my current PB, the world record still does the slower route, so... Just do the double K's route. It's what the guide is, what the route is. Make your life a lot easier. And so, okay, so what I did for this fight is I was standing in a spot shooting the guys in the first round. Because I know where the barrel spawns. There's a kind of a reference point on the ground that you can stand on. And this fight is just hitting him 16 times. That balloon and sponge on top of warp one has a really weird hitbox. Sometimes they'll go right through it and miss.
Okay, so I think this is the part of the route where the guide might say something a little different. So if you didn't do the power shed kick earlier in Factory, do exactly what the guide says. The guide is right. I don't remember exactly what I put in the guide, but... What? Okay. I have no idea why the camera flipped there. But if you did power shed kick, then you just do the route I'm doing here. And there is some a little trick you can do on these switches. I'll try to show it off on the last two. Where you can play your guitar at the start of these to kill the enemies. I'm really bad at it. And like what I did right there, shooting those guys was only two seconds slower. And the codes for these are written on the doors and in the route. And I jumped a little late there, so, so uh, like I was, I was chimpy charging away from the switch. You jump out of the chimpy charge, and then try to mash Z up and Z. Well, you hold Z and mash Z up as you're landing to try and play your instrument. And I like to try to get two balloons after that round. Or do the last good. Uh, I currently do not use a webcam because my laptop overheats. If you want me to use a webcam, donate money so I can buy a better computer. Thank you. Uh, you can sometimes kill these guys with oranges, but I missed both of them. So I'll just shoot them instead. And try to get that balloon before the golden banana spawns. It's not that big of a deal if you miss, though. So you want to be very careful in these vines. You can miss that bonus barrel. Uh, you've been struggling with having ammo. Uh, what are you learning 101 or NLE? Since ammo man management is pretty different in both categories. The only part of this route where you need to worry about your ammo is in between buying Diddy's gun and buying Tiny's gun. That's the section where you don't really have any refills and it's possible to run out. So I guess pick up ammo when you can and try not to waste it. But after you buy Tiny's gun, you should never have ammo issues ever again. I, okay, you don't need all these bananas. You can skip too. I shouldn't have gone back for that. There's also a chance you're trying to learn. Okay, that, that's when you're struggling with it. Then don't really know what to say other than stop missing. <laughs> I guess yeah. Look for ammo that you can pick up along the way. Try not to waste it. Really all I can say. But luckily, that's like the only part of the run where you have to worry about ammo. There's so many fairies throughout the rest of the run that you'll never have to worry about ammo ever again. So that's the movement I like to do there for getting Chunky's bananas. It's not the fastest, but I think it's easiest. 
Don't forget Tiny's balloon here. Shoot it from the edge. And if for some reason you missed warp 4 at the start of factory, since while you're learning, it's very likely that you uh, fell and didn't actually hit that top warp 4. So you would have had to climb the production normally as Diddy after Beaver Bother. Welcome to bonus stage. Always hit Lanky afterwards for bonus point. Yeah, like he's blown there. You didn't have his gun first time around you were here. I guess you weren't over there in this round. If for some reason you had to pause exit in between hitting Diddy switch and getting here, you'll need to hit Diddy switch again since there's a cage that blocks there. And for a DK's blueprint here, I like to stand from here and shoot. Then you can kick jump to get over. Please? <laughs> And that is Factory, your first full level completed. Do a kick jump there to get on the platform. If you're slow, you'll have to wait an extra cycle. I've never seen the golden banana fall there. There are setups you can do to have the golden banana land on you, but I'm bad and I don't do that. Oh yeah, so something you can do when you're learning is before you pause the exit to leave the level is check to make sure you have all their golden bananas and medals. So you saw there when I got DK's last golden banana in factory, it shows the counts for all the Kongs. They should all say four. Although, that won't be true for every single level. We'll see later why, but I know Tudos used to do this when he did runs. I never have, but like you can check the medals as well to make sure you got 75 with each calling. It's probably a good idea. Instead of backtracking at the very end Welcome after your 8 hour and 1 minute first run. This awful RNG.
Yeah, okay, so thanks to TJ, I think it's... So after you pause, you press Z twice. I think R twice would work too, to get to the level total screen. And it should say 20 out of 25 for Factory. If you got all the gold bananas, then there should be... I think it's five medals floating around. I really haven't looked at that screen in a while. Yeah, it's probably a good idea to check before you leave. What I do is, when I'm paused exiting the very last level, Japes 2, is I'll press Z once to make sure I have 40 banana medals. And then, I call that good. Okay, so before I get into Galleon, Galleon was completely rerouted fairly recently. So, and I have made some slight modifications to the new Galleon route in the beginner's guide that does make it beginner friendly. So, you have zero excuse to go learn the old Galleon route. Learn the new one, it's better. There's only one change from what I'm doing in this run, which you'll see shortly. It involves Lanky's balloons. Get that bunch, doesn't matter if you hit warp two. But hitting warp 3 is very important here. And you want chunky sweet bananas here. You jump off to get to the battle crown. Tips for fairies, uh, my main advice is to not hesitate for the pictures and to just go for it. The more you hesitate and try to wait for the fairy, the more it will move. But fairies are significantly easier from farther away because you need to get the full fairy in the little circle and that means if the fairy is farther away, then it's less fairy to get in the circle. <laughs> Yeah, stand as far away as possible for the fairy pictures, and just don't hesitate. Actually, you'll see for this fairy, I do something to make it a little easier. So you could just take the fairy picture from right where I'm standing, but I've been long jumping over here recently and taking it some farther away. And uh, I think that's the first case of it, but you can pause exit immediately after taking the fairy picture to skip the cutscene. As soon as you start to see the fairy disappear, you're good to pause exit. You don't need to worry about being too early, as long as you see the fairy disappearing. Now when the water is at its peak, you jump- ooh. I'm bad. Jump, aerial, and you grab.
You really want to kill that guy. Going around him is not easy. Now I can put the cannonball in the cannon, shoot the balloon, then start the minigame. I do Ultra Baby Strats for cannon game. Ooh, that might miss. Okay, that was kind of close. I think I'm going to leave my splits off. If you want to see where I'm at covered in my PB, you can always just look at the splits.io file. It's on speedrun.com. Swim? Okay, so yeah, you swim through vertical walls there. Straight to the right, and down to this tag barrel. Raise the water with DK. Hit warp 5 here, very important. And Womp's Fortress. I'll be doing ultra baby strats in here, as to not fall, hopefully. Pretty sure even Cloaked Yoshi did this faster than me when he was learning. I remember he like did the kick jump strats. I don't even do that. So, yeah, it's pretty hard to fall if you did what I did there. Okay, if you want to see where I am, compared to my PB. <sighs> I'm really a minute behind. Jeez, I suck. Oh, so what I did there is a uh, crouch fall. If you're holding Z while falling, you won't take fall damage. This is a stupid balloon shot, which I always miss. Not today. You just kick jump down to the boom, the boom blast platform as soon as you leave. And you should be set up to get that balloon. If you miss it, you just wait for it to come around. You need to get all three bunches, I think, in here. Yeah, so you need to take all these different little paths to get them all. Ooh, okay, so what I did there is not good. I missed the bunch. So now you get to see what happens when you miss that bunch. Do not go back in the baboon blast, there are a faster five you can get later on. So you'll see that later. But optimally, you would want to get that bunch, but I missed it. Oh, okay, so actually, before you tag Tiny, if you if this is your first, if you're trying to do your first run or you're learning, turn in blueprints with DK. Hey, okay, if you haven't, if you're not comfortable with Helm, turn in blueprints with DK, and turn in blueprints with Tiny. That will give you 16 minutes in Hideout Helm, because for every blueprint you turn in, you get an extra minute in Helm. You start out with 10 minutes, so turning in six will give you 16 minutes. 
I'm only turning in blueprints with Tiny because I only need 13 minutes, but I recommend you turn in blueprints with DK as well. Until you're comfortable. Or else I guarantee you, you will run out of time your first time trying help. Alright, a lanky ledge slip. I don't like these at all. And we're just trying to move as little as possible. If you ran out of time, like Shadow Link, you did, even with 16 minutes, then you could even turn in, I guess, Diddy's blueprints as well later on. Turn in as many blueprints as you need. Both DK and Tiny is probably fine when you're starting out. Unless you're really bad, you can turn in more. Oh yeah, don't do Diddy's crown under Helm Timer. Bad idea. If you can do Helm without turning in blueprints, you're as good as Low Tad. Yeah, so Puff Toss. Uh, the stars are in the same place every single time. I recommend watching the video I have linked in the guide. It is a really good Puff Toss fight. It shows you what to do. I mean, I'm, I'm still like doing this fight correctly right now. Not perfect, but... You just do the same thing every time. Just take some memorizing. Oh, that's... Oh. Don't do that. Or don't miss that. There are numbers I also have written in the guide. Kind of give you directions, but I don't really find them that helpful. They help you. Great. Alright, so right here, this is where the route's going to be slightly different if you want to do the easy strats. I'm going to do this first, what I do. Lucky deloads, I look back, aerial, and fall, forward a little. Then I walk forward until Lanky. There, you can see Lanky. I shoot these balloons. This. This is kind of difficult, falling like that and shooting the balloons from out of bounds. If you're not comfortable with that, you can shoot those balloons later and just navigate straight to this area after backflipping out of bounds and just skip the balloons without losing height or anything. Uh, I do have a video of that in the guide. It's pretty simple, like all you do is walk straight. And getting out of bounds there is really easy, you just backflip. But if you want to try shooting those balloons from out of bounds like I did, it's not that difficult. It's just, if you mess up, it loses a ton of time having to go back up there and go out of bounds again.
So get into here, go to the back, see up, go through the wall, and you're in. Welcome to bonus day. Oh, this is this is going extremely well. That was worse than DK Isles, where I had to hit eight. Is there a video with the guide? This is the video. It's why I'm making this video to go along with the guide. Uh, if what you just linked is the guide, then this is the video that will go along with the guide. That <laughs> that's the wimpiest orange dive I've ever done. They're not that difficult, you just throw an orange. Oh, but this this out of bounds here. Uh you just swim to get under the ship. Then Tiny's room is the upper run the upper one, but I like to personally go into Lanky's. And then swim out of bounds here. Go around like he's going banana and go to the bonus barrel here. Yeah, something else to mention about swimming th through vertical walls is you can only do it when you're facing north. That's the. I don't know if it's actually north, but each area has a direction where you can swim through the walls. And I, and I like to just call it north. I can't hit one more. And, yeah, so when you're facing north like that, if you're not doing any inputs on the control stick, so by the time you leave C up and start swimming, you need to be going straight. Do not touch the control the control stick, and then you'll be able to swim out of bounds if you're facing the right direction. Uh, world record is possible in N64, honestly, but not likely. Uh, okay, so this ferry on N64 is pretty difficult, but on VC you can just take a picture of it through like that. That picture would not have worked on N64. Instead, I recommend going up really close to the bars. And that's because you can't take pictures of ferries through walls on N64, so... And those bars count as a wall. Starfish is trolling, you can swim out like that. If we're talking actual optimal times, then both versions can sub 5. That's not a something that's up for debate, but obviously that is not easy. So for DK's room, on N64, you do not need to do what I'm doing right here. You can swim directly through the ship up here, but on VC, you have to do this. And if you're on N64, you can do this as well as you want, but you can swim directly through the ship on N64. 
OVC, you have to do that for some reason. Ooh, and okay, since I missed the DK bananas earlier in the boom blast, I have to get all ten in here. Normally you would only need to get five, but if I missed the bunch, I'm getting all ten. I don't know if we actually know why swimming through the ship doesn't work on BC. The only explanation is lag, like everything else, but... Yeah, I don't really know what to explain why that is. For these out-of-bounds swims in Galleon, you just need to go to the same spot that I do and just copy my movement. You don't need to be careful about voiding out. For both the one I did is Tiny and DK to get into their ship rooms. If you swim too far forward, you can void out pretty easily. Swim all the way to the seal over here. Oh, yeah, let's go banana. Now, do not enter the seal race. Instead, go back and tag everybody's favorite Kong. Swim through this wall right here. And the loading zone extends down, so you don't need to jump or anything. And you could do the race normally, but that's no fun. So instead... You do that. <laughs> Just swim into the ship and you'll pick up the golden banana. I don't know what else to say, really. You swim into the ship. Now this is a spot where if you did not get Lanky's balloons from Out of Bounds, you want to go get them right now. So, go get them if you haven't. But I already got them, so I will use Ignore 2. And I got something called No Clip here because you saw Lanky was underneath the warp. So that allows you to just swim straight into that gate. Now, you can't just swim into that gate normally, because it's not in the, the right direction of what Swim Through Vertical Walls works, so if you did not get no clip like I did, you would do exactly what you did with Tiny earlier to get in here. That's not going to clip. And yeah, any Kong except for DK can do that seal race skip that I did. DK can't because he moves too slow. Okay, so I was able to get no clip taking warp 2 there because of the water cycle. I believe how it works is that since I took the warp when the water was at its peak, that allowed me to spawn underneath the warp pad, since the warp was so high up in the water cycle. From my understanding, that's how it works, and for some reason that allows you to swim through any wall without doing the CF glitch. So I use that to get into the ship. But if you don't get it, it's not that big of a deal, just do, a, do what you did with Tiny. Ooh, I miss these. Isn't where you warp to not... Oh, I don't even know what to... Okay, tag chunky here. Isn't where you warp to not based on... 
where the warp actually is. It's a set position that you will always warp to regardless of where the warp is. Okay, so for this clip, this clip's kind of weird. You want to be like approximately 45 degrees, like a little to the right, see up, and then you'll swim down like that. Welcome to bonus stage. So it's probably obvious by now that there is this game is so complicated with all the glitches and stuff. Like, even while recording this, I'm still asking questions about how things work. Like, there's just so much that goes into this game, which might make learning it overwhelming, but it's worth it. Like, I'm just trying to share all the knowledge that I can in six hours. Obviously not going to be everything, but I'm doing my best. So you're kind of on a cycle right here. Well, you are on a cycle to get on that ship. You just want to swim straight for warp 5, use it, and jump on this ship like that. And on VC, you can walk straight through here and not get hit. On N64, you can't do something a little different, I guess. Okay, so hit two of those barrels, do not hit a third, backflip up these, jump aerial to get on top, jump aerial again, do not backflip on top of there or else you will long jump off. Okay, so if for some reason you need to turn even more blueprints in for Helm, do that now. But really, you should be fine with 16 minutes for both DK's and Tiny's blueprints. Probably hit the Diddy switch on the ship. You need to take into account that the ship is moving, so you need to lead your ground pound. Yes, and I still have the route notes in front of me when I'm doing runs. Even though I basically have it memorized, I still like to use the route. So what you can do there is you jump on him once, then you jump aerial like I did to do the finishing blow. Don't forget this balloon, this is really easy to forget. No warp 5, no clip. I, I've never gotten it in this route. Never. So you swim into the fish's mouth. When he opens it is RNG, so we hope he opens it. Play your instrument as soon as you get on this. Now, I could probably make a 20 minute video talking about mech fish, but basically what you want to do is try to get a double shot. Which is what I just got there, so I will be hopefully doing this optimally. Okay, no, that... I wish I could have hit that Vana one one more time. I'm gonna have to, this is going to be pretty slow, but... So what I did at the very start there was... 
I, I hit both of the top ones, which messes up the ship's whatever, and allows you to just spam shots and hit targets. There is, if you miss the first one, there's a backup you can do, which I might make a video on that someday. That conditioner discovered, but he never highlighted his explanation, so I'll have to make one myself. Yeah, uh, you probably won't really want to worry about getting a double shot in there your first run. It's just don't miss any cycles and you won't fail it. Oh, no clip actually prevents you from mentoring mechfish? I did not know that. So now for Diddy, you want to swim, do the exact same thing as you did as Chunky into here. Then you want to swim through this wall into the bonus barrel. Welcome to bonus day. Swimming in this minigame is pretty bad, so do your best. Oh yeah, I haven't really talked about lag reduction much on N64. On VC you can get away with not doing any pretty much the whole run, but... On N64, in places like in Mechfish where you're just standing around not doing anything, waiting, you would want to look down to reduce lag. You can also do that during boss fights and maybe a couple other places. You can do a backflip to completely ignore that guy. And I'll be doing baby strats in this mini game. I recommend do the same. So what I'm doing is I'm cartwheel jump aerialing to get over the edges of these guys. You don't need I I got dangerously close there. Don't do that. The, their hitbox for their lights is kind of like a sphere. So you can't just jump over the middle of them. But you can jump jumping over the outsides is safer. Okay, so right here, this is something that I was kind of hesitant to include in the beginner route, but I'm going to do a moon kick here. This is kind of like the power shed kick, where you're jumping and mashing B on the edge, like that. I guess if you're really struggling with that, you could use warp 4 at some point, but... I don't really know where the best place for that would be. That moon kick honestly isn't that bad, and I'm sure after some practice you can get the hang of it. Whoa! 
So something about those baboon balloon pads, you don't need to do the backflips up like I did. You can just use the baboon balloon pads, but... Okay, thank you. But if you're backflipping onto one of the pads, then you need to wait before pressing Z, or else you'll get these little fake balloon things. That happens when you're trying to do the baboon balloon in the middle of another animation. So you need to make sure you're standing completely still when you're doing it. Not in the middle of any animation of landing. I can swim directly through this hole. And hopefully I'll get the optimal mouse cycles in here. The spot that you can swim through vertical walls in this room is directly back from where you entered, so I might do it here. Yeah, so like right here you can swim at about that angle to get out of this clam. Or oyster. I don't even... what, what are these guys called? I like to use my instrument for this guy. And back to the lighthouse area. Same swim we did as Chunky, the starter galleon. And you can swim through this chest with a C up. You get a bunch. That should be 75. If you're short bananas with Lanky, for some reason there's five extra underneath this box. Yes, T4. I believe that anybody can speedrun DK64. So, uh, <laughs> go ahead. No matter what mental state you are in. Can't promise you'll be good, though. Okay, so there's a cutscene skip you can do here. You want to get the golden banana as early as possible. Okay, I got it. If you miss the golden banana, you'll have to watch a cutscene instead. Swim through this wall. Hopefully you're good at swim through vertical walls by this point. If you're if you're still having trouble with some vertical walls, just look more to the right, and that should help you with your angle. And make sure you're not doing any con control stick movement after leaving C up. That camera's kind of weird, but I'm swimming over to where the monkey port pad is. And then now is the optimal time to get this gold banana. Because coming up is a glitch called Tiny Helm Early, which is honestly pretty difficult on VC. This may take a while to learn. So what you're, you're, you're going to want to kick slide, jump, ponytail twirl off of this. If Tiny can possibly get up there. That might... no, that's not going to make it. See? I'm still bad at this. 
You need to have momentum going off of that. And I didn't even make it up all the way, so I have to do... Oh! Yeah, that... This is not that easy. The lag on N64 makes this a lot easier. And you should have no problems getting up there. Then you jump where I did to uh, get out of bounds and fall into the loading zone. And I picked up 10 homing ammo with Tiny, that's really important. You're gonna want 20 before you enter Helm. Yes, I do recommend playing through this game normally, because the hardest part about 101 is not any of these glitches. It's knowing the level layouts and where things are. If you play through normally, hopefully you will get a sense for the shape of the levels, where everything is, so that when it comes to learning the route, you aren't running around clueless of how to get to places. That's the most important thing you can do before you even start learning, is just playing the game normally, knowing where stuff is, since there is a lot of collectibles. And how I got out of bounds there is backflipping in the corner, and I'll just, I have, I have another explanation linked in the guide, just watch that instead, you just backflip in the corner. Uh, I'm gonna do Chunky Helm. I'm gonna be a baby. So I don't want to run out of time, but there's something faster you can do here using DK. Don't worry about that. Just do what I'm doing here. Now this is Terminal Clip. Uh, what? So I basically was walking into the corner right until Chunky stopped shaking, which is kind of hard. You didn't really see it there, but... Then I see up to the left a little and jump. These explanations are really bad for Helm here, but... This is stuff that you do in all the categories. And in the guide, I have much better tutorials linked for you to go watch to learn how to do this helm stuff. It's like, this is stuff you would do in any percent. So many people have made guides on how to do this. So go watch those instead. However, if you don't want to do that terminal clip as Chunky, you can just tag Tiny and enter this room the intended way using Mini Monkey. It's not that much slower. I don't really think the controls are that bad on N64. On VC, yeah, the controls are terrible, but... I guess I just grew up playing this game, so I didn't really notice... Like, I was just so used to the controls. This was the main video game I ever played. So, like, this was the controls I was used to. But you'll see, like, I'm still struggling to go in straight lines. Yeah, I'm pretty sure 
the guy that has linked CFOX's any percent tutorial that explains Terminal Cliff and the Out of Bounds and Helm Lobby. So for Helm, you need to do all these minigames. There's no going around it. You need to do the two minigames to unlock the banana medal. I like to hit that third target first because if I miss it, I will just restart immediately. So the rest of Helm is really straightforward. You just do the mini games with the other Kongs. I'm gonna try not to talk very much to save my voice. So this minigame is RNG. It's currently in one of the boxes, you don't know which one it is. This is where the homing ammo comes into play that you got in Helm Lobby. Wow, that was pretty bad. Oh, I didn't split again. I usually split after the second minigame. Wow, someone who actually thinks I'm old enough to have a beard, that's a first. The game's easy. This one is a little harder, don't fall. I don't like to do kick slides into my ponytail twirls. Whoa. I almost just fell. Yeah, if you've noticed throughout this whole run, before I do ponytail twirls, I usually do kick slides into them, like, well, I'll show after I get the medal. But for that minigame, doing kick slides puts you kind of high, and you might miss the stars. It's 
So that's what I mean by kick sliding right into a pony tilt room. Uh, for this, we need to hit a switch and go to the end. This is the second mini game you use homing ammo and the last one, so you can finish off all your homing ammo in here if you want. Those zingers each need three hits. So for this, you can... I did not move horizontally from where I started, so I'm, I'm holding Z. You can hold Z with Diddy to hover, and you spin around in place, and can hit all these switches from one spot. You just need to get your height established. What am I? I have another mini game left. Wow. Okay. Thank you, game. So that one's RNG. One of the Kremlings triggers the switch, and it happened to be the first one. The margin of error for a 14 minute helm. Well,. Unfortunately, with this new Galleon route, you're going to be at 13 minutes in Helm since you don't you have one less tiny blueprint than the other route. So, I mean, for you specifically, Balam, like, look at your PB and see how much time you had left for Helm. But I, I did 17 minute helm for several months. It wasn't until I switched to VC that I did 14 minute helm for the first time. But you can still fail a minigame or two, like I didn't see what my time remaining there was. It was still over a minute, so you could have been over a minute slower than me there and still be fine. Uh, for these long battle crowns, I recommend using your crystals in the middle here, like that.
You have 130 remaining with 17 minute helm. Oh, with 14 minute helm, yeah, then you're fine. That's that's good, I think. <laughs> it's not bad. After the Battle Crown, you need to make your way over to the Key 8 room. This is some more out of bounds that will be better explained in an any percent tutorial. Basically, you clip there and turn a little to the right, follow this path, go about straight from here. Now, okay. What I'm gonna do here is to prevent Fate Key. So, Watch carefully, I'm turning my camera. Turn your camera to include the window and the door, and you will not get Fate Key. It is 2016, and if you ever get Fate Key, you have like, an extreme case of stupidness. So, if you ever get Fate Key, it's because you're not paying attention. Turn your camera to include the window and the door, and you'll never get Fate Key. The end. And I... <laughs> This is stupid, don't be like me. The damage boost is way easier from the other side. I'm really bad at avoiding fall damage on this part. Yeah, I never can. Okay, this is the bathroom break, so I'll be right back. I'm gonna take my gamepad with me to the bathroom, because I can. I can't believe I just did that. I I just completely messed up the route. Jeez. I was thinking ahead. Uh, 
I was kind of thinking Castle Kongs, I guess, but... Don't warp over there. <laughs> After you turn in the keys, you do this. There was a ton of time here. Okay, but anyway. So... You'll know that you didn't get Fake Key when... Key 8 turns in first. And then, you, so you need to make sure you turn in keys 8, 3, 4, and 5. They will turn in in that order. After you turn in key 4, you will need to walk back down and turn in key 5. Alright, so on N64 you could orange slip into this tree here, but this is the orange list method. Swim through Roka walls here. Swim up to the tree, C up, exit C up, dive, mash B. And you can hold down to get the loading zone. Then uh, there's a roll clip here. The spot's kind of picky, but just roll right it, and you'll get it eventually. I think that's my first fairy miss. Yes, that was a swim through shores I did on the tree to get in. It was a combination of a swim through vertical walls and a swim through shores. The going in a sea up before you dive activates swim through vertical walls mode. And then you can swim through shores. There, you do a kick jump to get to that golden banana and jump over the raft. To get the bunch. If you land on that raft, you will trigger a fairly long cutscene. If you miss that golden banana, unfortunately, you will like you can't get the golden banana the intended way because you don't have sniper scope. Uh, so I guess you'll just have to go through and try again, which sucks. So don't miss it. And if you try to leave the tree the intended way, you the game will soft lock. So don't do that. You should have seven coins here at least. Uh, you don't need warp three. Oh, it is important that you hit warp four though. I hit warp four with DK. That's important. You don't need any others. Oh, it's gonna be one of these days. Yeah, I don't know. I was not... Like, warp 3 is just not in my... I'm not focusing on it. All I need to do is hit warp 4 as DK down there. Then you need to hit warp 5 here. Now you'll be doing a different type of ledge clip to get into the library. To have my camera like this, and then I have to face directly back. And you 
Inch your way backwards with jumps until you clip. If you go too far, DK will grab the ledge, then you just try again. And then once you see that you've clipped, you need to hold forward. If you do not hold forward, you will clip inbounds, and that's bad. So once you see that you've clipped, hold forward. But you want to do little jumps backwards until you clip. You don't need to hit warp through there, I just hit it for safety for some reason. It's not required. And jetpack, just get to 5,000 points. Don't die. When they spawn down here, it's kind of annoying, but... I have to hover in place about here. Fuel doesn't give you that much points. Killing an enemy gives you 25. Oh, actually, I think fuel gives you 100. These items give you 250. If fuel lands down there, I don't even bother. I'll wait until another piece falls down with it. Uh, only one of these items can be on screen at all times, not including fuel. And I'm, I have B held down the entire time, I'm just using A to move around. And when you get the coin, exit. And buy Super Duper Simmon Slam. Hello, Alpha and Retro. And fall right here with the crouch. Uh, you don't need to hit warp one here, but I always do for safety now, in case I fall in here. Welcome to bonus stage. Oh yeah, so this mini game, yeah, this mini game is kind of fun. Just beat the snakes. So this bat can hit you on your way back, but it's really unfortunate, it's why I hit warp one. Bat didn't get me. You don't need to get all these bananas with Chunky, just some of them. And you can shoot these balloons without knocking down the gates. You just jump, shoot. Pretty simple. Need to knock down these two though for Diddy. Yeah. 
This puzzle is the same every time. Uh, there's only two of those puzzles. There's another in Fungi, Chunky's face. Okay, so right here, this is the first case of a moon tail. Uh, so for moon tails, jump A B A B A B. That's a really bad explanation. In the guide, I have linked C Fox's tutorial that talks about moon tails way more than I just did. But you don't need the moon tail to be back here, but it's a little faster. Basically, right before you hit the ground. You're pressing A and B really quickly. To do the moon tail. So like he has two balloons in here, shoot the first one there. One hundred and one percent is way more interesting than any percent. Like, wouldn't you rather play this game for six hours instead of thirty minutes? Like, Welcome to bonus I don't even need to say anything else. It's twelve times the fun. That was pretty good. Normally I get Lanky's balloon after that minigame, but I got it before for some reason. Okay, so in here you just need to make sure you get to 35 bananas for the end of the hallway, which is really easy. See, like, I don't even need any more. So, I'll be getting into the tree the same way as I did with DK as Chunky. See up, dive, mash B. Then I have a little setup for his balloon right here. I just look straight up and... I was almost looking too far left there. Oh boy, first beaver bother. Like, well, we already had one beaver bother in factory, but first difficult beaver bother. Uh, when beavers are up against the wall like that, you need to back away from them or else you'll never get them. Mashing B really helps. You just need to get the good angles.
classic beaver baller taking until the last second. There to get up here faster. Use warp five. Okay, so these falls and castle are really intimidating at first, but you just like if you're watching this video, just do what I'm doing. You land in the right place. As everybody doesn't bother to watch any videos and just reads the guide and has no idea where to go in castle, because it's kind of hard to explain where to go. You just jump where I did and you'll land in the right spot. So in N64, you cannot take this fairy picture here. Well, you can, but don't. I just missed it. I think it's easier to take here than from over there. Yeah, take the fairy picture there, or you can get it as tiny later, whatever you prefer. But on N64, you don't really have a choice. You need to take it later. Yeah, so that's where V-cheating comes from. Those fairy pictures. Play your instrument as soon as this room loads. And try to shoot the balloon before the golden banana appears. You do not need to use Gorilla Gun. That pad in there is pointless. Don't even worry about it. So, uh, I like to play my instrument as soon as Sadiq gets on the checkered floor here to kill the enemies. And you can backflip to get in the rocket barrel early. That hardly saves any time. If you miss it, it's no big deal at all. I use the melon in the background as sort of a visual cue for when you jump. Nice! I got the snipe! That's not easy. You missed that balloon, get it after the bonus barrel. Okay, so for this, there are directions in the guide for what to do. You want to be holding Z the entire time. So the first line says switch six stay, so I'm going to switch six times. That's two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm going to stay one. And these are written in the guide. I don't even have these memorized. Switch two, one, 
two, stay one, switch five, one, two, three, four, five, stay five, one, two, three, four, five, switch, stay two, switch two, Stay one more and break. Yeah, so this mini game can the controls can kind of mess you up if you're if you don't want to switch tracks. You need to let go of all your directions kind of early, or else it will take your directions from earlier and switch you anyway. I have to get one banana is tiny before entering. Yeah, and also for that mini game, do not pull the opposite direction if you're trying to stay on the track. Just don't do anything. So for this race, you need 10 coins. There is one shortcut I do. But try not to miss the checkpoints. Don't hit the boxes. Yeah, no missiles in this one. So this is the shortcut here. Just do that. And you can use R to take sharper turns, so right here I'll do simple R movement. Although you don't really need to use R at all if you don't want to. Like that turn I didn't use R at all. You can still turn pretty sharp without it. So if you didn't get the fairy earlier, get it right now. Now coming up is called an air swim. It's one of the few cases of this actually. It's pretty cool. Go into this pool, around here, see up. See up again, and you want to turn left and go around these platforms. You don't want to go too low, or else you'll die. If you're too high, you'll surface. It's about right about the height. Yeah, let me surface there. I need to walk down this ramp until you hit 51 bananas.
Oh yeah, okay, so after you hit 51 bananas, you backtrack a little, fall down, get four more, and then come over here. Play your instrument. And then here it's pretty important to get 10 homing ammo. You can only get 5 if you want to, but I like to get 10 to be safe for something coming up. You can ledge clip as tiny if you want, or switch to DK to Mooncake. It does not matter which Kong you use to start this fight, because he will always start as lanky. Or I switch to DK if it's easier. Let's get some hype with these splits. Maybe this will attract more viewers, right? Green splits equals streaming big. So try not to get rid of Lanky in this fight. If you accidentally kill Lanky, you will end the fight as whatever Kong you are, then you'll just have to tag Lanky again afterwards. But, uh... So, Cutout cannot appear in the same place twice. So, since he appeared there, he has to be in one of these three now. Now this is kind of a tight cycle to make. Oh, he's on the far side. I'll probably still make it. Yeah. But now there's two of him. There's a bright one and a dark one. The dark one is fake. That's the dark one. Light one can't appear in the same spot twice. This whole run will be uploaded to my YouTube, so if you missed the beginning, you can watch it there. So for this phase, he's always going to be moving counterclockwise, so he's going to appear in that cannon, now this one. And for this last shot, you want to be in the cannon next to where the ghost is to set up a swim through vertical walls. So dive, see up, look a little to the right, and swim forward. And you'll warp to the center and get the key. Now use warp four than five. If you disposed of Lanky during that fight, you'll need to tag him after using warp five here. Otherwise, go straight to the switch. 
No miss. This is where the homing ammo comes in. You cannot shoot these switches without either sniper scope or homing ammo. And by standing under them and shooting homing ammo, you will... You'll be able to hit them. You need to kill all the enemies for the baboon balloon pad to appear, and then all the three switches for this air to appear. And there is a balloon in here, but it is actually not in the route, just based on how difficult it is to shoot. Which is a bad reason, but I don't like it. Welcome to bonus day. Okay, and I forgot to mention that that swim through vertical walls I did at the end of the boss fight. If you, for some reason, lost all your Kongs all the way to Diddy, do not do it as Diddy or else it will count as losing the fight and you won't get the key. But it works with all the other Kongs. So where this crystal is, I like to jump down to the greenhouse. Well, it doesn't work with Diddy because what you're doing is you're voiding out and warping to the center of the arena because if you miss one of the cutouts, it'll send you back to the arena and switch Kongs. So, and then if you lose Diddy, it's it's losing the fight, so that's why it doesn't work with him. The other Kongs, you go back to the middle and just switch to the next Kong. But Diddy's always the last Kong. Well, I guess this greenhouse section is really straightforward. You just run through the maze, get the golden banana, battle crown appears. Who said I can't skid jump? And after the crown, you'll always want to be holding down, because you might be disoriented, but it's always down that you need to go.
And then you want to crouch fall here for Lanky's blueprint. This is the final section of Castle of the Crypt. Whoa, camera's kinda weird there. So we're gonna be under this barrel, shoot, then jump into the lanky barrel before the cutscene starts. Then when you get to here, you can jump, aerial, and make it to the golden banana. You don't need to make the vines appear. Why does my Minecraft skin look so round and bad? Make me a better one then, and I didn't split again. Yeah. Talking and splitting and playing is kind of hard. So for Tiny, do not forget this balloon. No, if you need help with this game, do not talk to Conditioner. He's like, honestly, kind of bad. Talk to me. So I'm going to be doing a skip in here to get to the Golden Banana early. Uh, it's pretty difficult, it's doable, it just takes practice, but... So... I don't like So I throw an orange about there, ponytail twirl out, get hit. Oh, this... Wow! Okay, that's what you not want to do. I think that's the first time I've failed it in a run. I'm gonna do it again, because I'm stubborn. There we go. If you don't want to do that, you just hit the switch, do it normally. This doesn't save that much time. Nice long jump. Okay, so hit warp 3 here, so you can leave. And Chunky should already be at 75 bananas, but if he's not, there are backups in here. But, I just want to go straight to the bonus barrel, which is behind this one. Welcome to bonus stage!
All right, so don't forget Diddy's blueprint here. And then there's a balloon on this side. I like to shoot it from about here. That should be good. Those clearly hit the middle of the switch. Hit warp one. Okay, camera. This is a very difficult puzzle. The the code is one, two, three, four. Try not to forget that. And you can shoot this balloon from right there. And finally, DK. I got the camera flip. You don't need to hit his warp since you're pause exiting out of here. Sure, you get this bunch. And this code is a bit easier than Diddy's. Top left, top right, bottom left. Now we got a long minecart ride. You need 25 coins. I'm probably gonna mute for this to save my voice. I'm afraid I can't answer that question, Cole, because I forgot to split for training grounds.
And what is that stupid anime emote? Okay, can we stop getting hit? Is a commentated speedrun, what are you talking about? Do you guys want more commentary for this very interesting minecart ride? Four bananas with each column. Yeah. Okay, so uh, shoot that. I guess one thing to note about this lobby is if you remove this boulder with Chunky and die, it respawns, so don't die. Or it goes back to where it was. When is max percent? Yeah, I'm not doing max percent for free. Donate, say, $100 this stream and I'll do max percent. Not settling for anything less. I'm going to do a stupid category, I'm going to sell out. Welcome to bonus stage. only have one melon out at a time, so there's no spamming shots. So you really want to make sure your shots count. That was terrible. <laughs> Sounds like you're going to give me negative money then, Cole? Okay, so before Castle, when I accidentally warped, I was thinking of this part where now you're switching to Chunky and going up to use Warp 2. So this first boulder is for Lanky, second one's for Chunky. Coming up is what we like to call Meme Jump with Lanky. On N64 you can actually throw oranges to create some lag to assist you on this jump. 
But it's kind of precise, because Lanky doesn't jump very far. Oh, barely made it. If you fail that, I recommend going and tagging like DK or Tiny. Don't try again as Lanky, you'll waste your time. Oh yeah, my PB fails that. So Crystal Caves, back here. So you hit that warp too, and up to the ice cube. Or ice tomato. That was a case, I think, of my Z button unpressing itself. That happens a lot in Banjo Kazooie, where I'm just going in Talon Trot, and suddenly. Banjo will exit Talon Shot for no reason, but just my Z button unpressing. So I have to get some crystals here. Maybe shoot this balloon. This is on the Wii U Virtual Console, but everything I'm talking about applies to N64 too. Try to mention any N64 differences, but overall there really aren't that many. Other than the fact that the game la the game lags everywhere. Oh, so I'm able to do those quick pounds by pressing B then A right after I hit the ground. I talked about this in Factory, but yeah, so right after you do a ground pound, B then A will allow you to cancel it. I, I just did one again there too. And Beetle Race. There is a skip for this, but I've never even tried it before, so we'll get to enjoy this race its intended way. Don't skip coins like me. So this is where we want to try to pass the beetle. On N64 I don't think you can pass it like that. Maybe. Or wait, or maybe it's easier to pass on N64. I don't even remember. If you don't feel comfortable passing the beetle, don't. There's a really easy spot at the end to pass the beetle if you want to just stay behind it. And that's right here. So if you're behind the beetle, you can jump right here and easily get ahead of it. He slows down a lot at the end. This is kind of a precise little trick here, using this baboon balloon pad to get to Lanky's blueprint. On N64 it should be really easy, but on VC you barely make it, so make sure you're holding straight, not wavering, but 
I recommend playing your instrument as soon as you get here, so there's zero chance of falling. And down back here to the entrance tag barrel. For Diddy. Ooh. <laughs> Tried to press R to turn the camera, but it didn't. It's a bonus stage. So, use your gun for these guys. Okay. Shouldn't be that hard. And the strategy guide even says, do not run around with your guns out. Put them away after each displant. Well done! Let me fly over here, land uh, close to the edge as possible so you can see it immediately and shoot this balloon. Oh, I have I haven't mentioned this yet, but something that I plan on doing. Because I talked about earlier how one of the hardest parts about learning 101 is learning the level layouts and where everything is. So I will be scanning the maps in the strategy guide and uploading pictures of them because there is a major lack of maps of this game on the internet. So hopefully <coughs> that will help people sort of have a more visual feel of the level layouts. Like people think caves is difficult to navigate, but it's just one straight line along a river. There's nothing else to it. It's just one river. There's nowhere to get lost. So I think it'll be helpful for me to upload the maps for people to look at. So for this room, it's kind of difficult, but I have a little pattern that I do the same every way. Sa same way every time. So I kill those, jump across the middle to lure those barrel guys to the center. Because you can't really hit them when they're on their edges, so kill those two guys. This guy, and this guy. And try to get to where the golden man is going to appear. I think I'm at 75 bananas, but I'll pick up an extra, yeah. If you picked up three bananas by Diddy's Kasplat, you'll only need to get two in there, but if you picked up two bananas by Diddy's Kasplat, you'll need to get three in there. He is... really? Can't believe these are all missing. Probably should have been shooting the balloon.
Why? <laughs> okay. Don't do this for him like me, please. Just don't. Alright, so you want to hit this one first, you kind of have to move quickly, then this one. And you want to kind of hide in this corner, so you don't get caught, then that one. Welcome to bonus stage! And the final room in this cabin is deep case. There is homing ammo in here that I highly recommend you use. Basically, spray and pray. don't need to hit warp 2 there. Now for this room, I'll be doing a moon kick that is pretty difficult. I do not recommend doing this on your first runs. Just do this room the intended way. Doesn't save that much time, because you can do that in the intended way pretty quickly. Yeah, what I did there is a uh, ledge moon kick then a turnaround jump at the end of it. Uh, how difficult is that? I didn't do it for probably my, my first six months of running the game. Maybe longer. I know I had like a 225 in NLE and I was still doing it the intended way. I mean, all you're really doing for the moon kick is jumping backwards and then mashing B as DK hits the ledge. I mean, it sounds simple, but it's just a really precise spot if you get a moon kick off of. And, and the reason I'm saying these things about, like, oh, don't do this your first run is because there is a lot of stuff to learn for running this game. And, like, out of the four people 
who tried to do NLE for the 12 hour challenge in February, zero of them finished because it was just too overwhelming. You're better off going through the whole route and getting through everything first before you try to do all these difficult things. It will make the whole learning process go a lot smoother if you're not worrying about trying to do the unnecessary difficult tricks your first time. This game already just takes a long time to learn since it's such a long category, but... Don't try to do too much at first. You want to get as close to edge as possible for this to shoot that balloon. Ooh. That's not going to work. not optimal. Don't be like me. It's now another swim through vertical walls right here. You can do the see up before diving, like watch this. I did the see up before diving and it still worked. Which is useful with Chunky sometimes when the water's too low to dive. And I guess you also saw that in Castle Tree, it worked as well. I switched to DK for this boss fight. Oh my gosh. See, moon kicks are stupid. K rule is probably going to be a how not to do the fight. That is correct. If you want to do all the fast strats, don't don't even watch my runs. Watch Hipster. <laughs> he does more fast strats than me. I only have world record because I do baby strats and have more consistency at them. I don't go for all the stupid hard things that I could. Oh yeah, so this boss fight, let's see, what can I talk about? You put the barrel in front of him, you dodge the attack. Okay. Oh yeah, on N64 you want to lag reduce. Let's let me see if I remember how to do this. So you can go over to like one of these crystals and jump on top. Maybe. You want to get back to the barrel in time.
Yeah, okay, so this is how you would like reduce 164. You just sit here. Commissioner, I am honored that of all the good streams right now, you are watching me. Okay, so this is pretty important. So I put the barrel down there, and then. Dodge this. I six of them. And I come back here. Backflip to get hit. And it hits me the wrong way. I don't really know why that happened. But ideally, when you backflip, it hits you the other way into where the key spawns. Five bananas here with Tiny in the river, then use warp four. Okay, so in this minigame, on N64 you do not need a pause buffer, but on VC, the, ga the game does not lag at all, so you kind of have to pause buffer unless you have insane reflexes. Because the intended speed of this minigame was programmed for the N64 speed, and because VC is sped up, it moves way too quickly. Yeah, see a divine. Hopefully, this was helpful. Okay, now I want to go straight into this igloo. Oh yeah, so the side of this igloo that you can swim through is where the tag barrel is. I didn't really explain that in Caves 1. And for this guy, I like to kill him first. This room is honestly kind of difficult, a super duper soon slam. You really need to leave your towns. Okay, so yeah, I'm using the side to swim through, it's closest to the tag barrel. Lanky's room is right here. I will, in the guide, I will put the little map that shows where each room is, since it can probably be hard to remember where all the rooms are for each con. I know that Hipster use, so in order to make the instrument, hello. In order to make the instrument pads appear to enter this igloo, you need to like rocket barrel through a star. And Hipster would use to 
rocket barrel through the star to make the instrument pads appear, and then still do the swim through vertical walls because he like he didn't know which was which, so he would spawn the instrument pads just to be able to know where to swim through vertical walls. I don't know for sure if instrument's faster there. I see some people do it. So, if you did not... Where? Okay, I forgot where I was. If you did not get DK's golden banana in the igloo in the first visit to caves, which I do not recommend you do because it's very difficult, you would get that right now. Uh, please? Oh, this is bad. Chunky's is in line with his little other igloo over here. After you kill the first round of these guys, you can shoot the balloon. If you miss the balloon, do not stand there shooting the balloon over and over, because you don't want to fail this. Like a certain somebody has. Oh no, even if one accidentally hits him, you're fine. It takes five hits for him to die. So if you fail this room, like, honestly... You, you have no hope, just stop speedrunning. I don't usually use a gun here, but that was faster. Now there's a clip here. I like to go where this orange is. Ooh, you need to be really straight. You just jump aerial in. I was not straight that time. There we go. And that's caves. So for this golden banana, you can do a damage boost. If you throw an orange, then move a little into it. Let it hit you that way. All this stuff is really straightforward. So if you did not get the fairy at the start of the run over here, this is when you'd want to get it. Uh, 
But I would still recommend you get that fairy at the start for the extra crystals and caves if you're not comfortable with the rocket barrel section yet. So here is a swim through shores. Here's Dive and Mash B, and you can jump into that gold banana. And you want to swim straight over to uh, this other gold banana you opened. Do you transform to make Warp 3 appear? Do not enter K rule. And do this mushroom. Okay. On N64, there is a orange lag clip to get to the Gorillagon pad without doing this mushroom, but it's pretty, it's very difficult actually. So you'll probably end up having to do this mushroom every time. Who found orange clips? I don't remember. I wasn't around back then. Maybe someone else knows. I believe it was only 2013. Maybe 2012. I think early 2013 when they were found. Honestly, a pretty recent discovery compared to everything else. For how major it is. I guess orange clips kind of not really major anymore on PC, but they were very significant and useful at the time on N64. Now fungi. Everybody's favorite level. Did you know that Fungi Forest was supposed to be a level in Banjo-Kazooie? But they decided, nope, not good enough for that game, we're gonna send it over to DK64 instead. So I did hit warp 2 there at the start with the chunky bananas. That's the only warp I need to hit. Let's hope this is enough 49 coins. This is by far the most difficult minecart. You still need to get 50 coins. Good luck. And I held R there after jumping over that log to look backwards and skip a cutscene. Oh, 
Ooh, I pressed R a little late. Shouldn't skip this one. You, I think you need to slow down before that one. If you're just going full speed like that, you'll hit it like I just did. Alright, so coming up is a ledge clip. This is one of the easiest ledge clips in the whole run. Let's get a better camera. Yeah, like you just fall into it. Kinda need to walk around to get in the loading zone with Chunky. And the reason I'm doing this boss fight is Chunky, because his gun does way more damage than Tiny's. You can get this get through this fight a lot faster. It's a two cycle fight instead of a five and a half cycle fight with him. Oh my, it still hit me. Now I'm slow. Okay, this is how you would not do the f this fight. You want to dodge his attacks. Okay, you can't pick up that gold mana is in there is chunky. You have to just leave it. Come back as tiny later. And I wanna take this keg over to the main room. Hitting warp one here is very important. And you can place these barrels just on the thing and they will explode. If you happen to fail that, then you can leave this, do the other two in this room, and leave the room and they will be respawned and you can do a third one. What I just did there is I walked out of bounds and go with this golden banana, that's all there is to it. Walk through the wall and walk over here. Okay, camera, thank you. So you don't really need to be too careful, you just run up to these and drop them. And that was actually a DK Golden Banana that Chunky grabbed, so I will be leaving Fungi Forest with Five chunky bananas and only three DK, which is fine. Now, same ledge clip as you did as Chunky. 
and you can just fall in. See, it's not such an easy ledge clip. If you happen to exit enter, void out, or die after the spider fight and before you pick it up as tiny, you will need to do the boss fight again. So don't do that. Ooh, no. Go over here. Yeah, so... Uh, because this category is based on the main total screen, you can pick up golden bananas as the wrong con. So, uh, Chunky got a DK golden banana. Which, that's one of, like, very few golden bananas that you can pick up as the wrong con. Just normally. So yeah, Chunky will have five, DK will have three. And this is a glitch called Skew, where you want to be swimming straight up into the thorns. And now, your Kong is laying down. So, Skew is a very nice complex glitch. It allows you to walk through walls. Uh, some rules while skewed, in order to stay skewed, are no regular jumps. You're allowed to long jump, you're allowed to backflip, but you can't do regular jumps. You cannot be holding A while landing. Entering a loading zone loses skew. Quite a few other things. But yeah, basically, while you're skewed, you can walk through walls. And how I got skewed was I was swimming straight up into the thorns. As long as you are swimming straight up, while you're... When you take damage, you will get a perfect skew. Whoa. That zinger control you? Okay, take this apple over here. Walk through this blue part of the wall. And enter the tag portal. With the backflip, not a regular jump. So, there are a few things you- whoa. Okay. There are a few things you can jump out of while in skew. You can jump out of rolls. You can jump out of cartwheels with Diddy. And uh, you can jump out of a rang stand with Lanky. You can jump out of kick slides with Tiny. But just- if you want to be really safe, just don't do regular jumps. Now since I entered a loading zone, I'm no longer skewed. I'm doing stuff like uh, swinging on vines, entering water, that will also lose skew. However, climbing trees does not lose skew. Okay, another one of these. The instructions are written in the guide. I don't have these memorized, so I'll be reading off of it. Hold Z the entire time, and just follow the directions. So switch three. Day two. Make sure not holding the control stick in any direction on these ones ready to stay in the same lane.
Now I just need the fairy. And for this fairy, I like to get a little far away from it, since fairies up close are really difficult. And still came right towards me. And you can skip the cutscene. I don't need to pick up that DK bunch yet. Hey, Xavier. Go in a rocket barrel and fly up to the bonus barrel at the very top. Welcome to bonus stage. And another one of these fun mini games. What other N64 platformers have I played? As I played SM64 when I was little, that was a terrible game. Uh, I bought Banjo Kazooie less than a year ago. I bought Banjo Tooie last fall. Last fall. Uh, is Diddy Kong Racing a platformer? Probably not. So enter this tag barrel. Switch to Lanky. Okay, and you know what, where to walk down this mushroom? Because this door is right where you walked up the first time, so you just walk back down the way you came. And now, this is a really tight section. You may want to hit warp 5 first as Diddy before tagging Lanky. I'm, I don't even know where to go here. Yeah, okay, here. Warp 5. I need to make it over to Lanky's room. Lanky's rooms are directly opposite of each other, and in order to hit that warp under the timer, you really have to know where you're going, so you might just want to hit it as Diddy first. You have plenty of time to make it to Lanky's second room. Welcome to bonus stage! Another pause buffer. Again, on N64 you do not need a pause buffer. You don't really need to have that great of reflexes to do this on N64, but on VC you pretty much need to. I like to get this homing ammo. <laughs> what am I? Okay, so this puzzle, all of Chunky's things are after the DK ones, 
I thought that cutscene was longer. I don't know why I was just standing there. Then the school banana takes a while to be real. I need to fall down to Chunky's blueprint, which is directly below this tag barrel. You can kind of zoom out the camera and look down. I guess it's not directly underneath, so you need to be careful about where you jump. Am I going to do the blind race of Super DK64? I don't have a controller. What controllers are compatible? And the boot last. This is the hardest boot blast of the run. Hopefully, I don't fall. There's only one path to take. I'm pretty sure I do not have a single like USB controller. When we didn't Mario Party, I had to use my keyboard. For these rings, you can aim a little high. Do not aim low. I don't have an Xbox One controller. And both of my Xbox 360 controllers are wireless. So I would have to buy something. I don't know what's best to buy. Uh, well, I have a rock band drum set. Is that USB, maybe? I don't know if that would work. Okay, so we we'll go down here afterwards. And you need to go around until you hit 40 bananas. I'm getting so many fake rolls. Then you get this DK punch here. Wait, did I... Oh, did I really miss one? Damn, I'm bad. Okay. So now this is where my backup banana knowledge comes in. The fake rolls were messing me up. Where's... I'm trying to think of a good DK banana to get. Okay, I don't know why I expected the cutscene there. I could get one at the start of the blue tunnel later, like after the rabbit race or something. Well 
Welcome to bonus stage. Thank you for flossing the stream, Alpha. There's your shout out. Wow, Alpha clearing my chat. How rude. Ooh, not that way, now Chunky. For Chunky Switch, I like to move back a little. I need to climb until you hit 75 bananas with him. Get that one. Now you can do a little cutscene skip here with DK. You want to stand a little in front of the switch like that, shoot, then ground pound. Oh yeah, I am one banana short. Don't know how I didn't notice that. Battle crown with tiny. Okay, so I honestly did not see which banana I missed. But yeah, don't miss a banana like I did. But I know I know which backup I'm gonna get. Won't be that out of the way. Looks like I need to unmod Alpha. Uh, causing problems. about here and you can hold A to fall all the way down with no fall damage like a certain other game. Maybe I'll see the DK banana right around here. No I can't see it from here. Now off to the best part of Fungi, the rabbit race. I wonder if anyone's going to tell me that I missed a banana there. But, I only need 50 leaving that tunnel, so it's fine. Looks like this is going to become a mod-free stream now. Uh. 
Alright, so the rabbit race. Something you can do, but I will not be doing, is you can get Lanky's blueprint during this race. It's pretty easy on N64, but I don't recommend trying on the Wii Virtual Console, as you will see later. First race is really easy. If you fail this, you can't run this category, because that means there's no way you can do the second race. Alright, so first race is easy. Player spin again, and now you do the real race. So, this race is probably the hardest golden banana on the Wii Virtual Console, so if I fail it, you will get to see the backup strat, but if I do it correctly, hopefully you will not get to see that. If you make any mistakes, it's kind of over, so don't make any mistakes. You can hope the rabbit gets stuck on this splat. Like that, that is very good. If I fail this now, it's basically impossible for me to fail now. On N64, this race is pretty easy. You shouldn't really have too many issues, but on Wii U, it probably take a lot of practice to get good at this. And I messed up that part, but since the rabbit got stuck, it didn't even matter. Alright, we won. Thank you for the host two dose. Glorious Liar is a cheater. So, the backup strat is that you can get into the lanky barrel as you're failing the race to be in a rang stand sprint at the start of your second try. Uh, on the guide, I'll try to put a video, maybe like Hipster's PV or something that does it. But if you do fail, there is that backup, so it's easier to your second try. I hope I don't get quality options now, or else this will be a three-part run. It really doesn't even matter if I get quality options. This, the stream already split in Aztec, so I'm gonna have to piece together the parts anyway before I upload it to YouTube. Now here to get the golden out early, you do a little ponytail twirl. and die. So this is where you hope you did not get a fake bean. You'll see shortly if I did. 
Fake Bean is a very rare occurrence where the bean is fake and does not get planted when you walk up to here, so you really just have to hope that your bean is real. I'm also going to be trying to do a cutscene skip here. I was too late, so I didn't get it, but... The bean is real, no fake bean. Now you gotta watch this lovely cutscene. World record. Oh, I have a command for that. Didn't even know that. It's 544.21 at the time of recording this. I guess. For those of you that just got here, I am recording a live run, sort of a t tutorial like, just explaining what I'm doing. I'll, hide, I'll highlight this, upload it to my YouTube channel. Just so it's easier for people who are trying to learn the category, but this is different from a tutorial in that it is just a live run. I'm not pausing to talk about stuff. Where? This fairy is not nice. You can hope the fairy stays in the box, but otherwise it's really difficult. The best possible time at the bottom is if I match my summer best for the rest of the run. Uh, I'm gonna do this here, I guess. I need to get one DK banana. Since I forgot one. TJ, I, I missed a DK banana and had to get a backup. That's the fastest backup I could think of. Make sure you don't forget this instrument pad. Make the L come out. Yes, that's where I missed one. I I even said make sure you get four make sure you're at forty going around here. And somehow I only got thirty-nine. I got like four fake rolls going around it, so I guess my movement was just really thrown off and I was not focusing. Okay, boring owl race. Don't land. If you want to, you can shoot him, and you can kind of push him with your shots. They don't. Re that doesn't really accomplish anything, though. Let's see, saw move there. If you want to be a daredevil, you could try to get those bananas while in Rocket Barrel, like Mr. Lotet does, but I would not recommend doing that. That's a really easy spot to land, so be careful. Make sure you're using Z during this race. Like, right down here I'll use Z to stop falling. And hover in place. Ooh, okay, I'm not getting a dance skip now because I landed. Welcome to bonus stage. 
So, for this minigame, don't get hit. This is not as hard as DK's, but it's still possible to fail if you're not focusing. The strategy guide actually says... Ooh, it says to bring in homing ammo to help. But I don't think homing ammo would help. It's weird not getting a dance up there. And don't forget these last two bananas. Here's another chance to get Lanky's blueprint, in case you forgot it after the rabbit race. It's very important to get 30 homing ammo in here. Get all of it. Ooh, okay. You shouldn't need that other lanky bunch. So there's a Diddy Balloon over by Snides, and because it's nighttime, you can't go over there. But you can shoot it from the top of this mushroom, get it right up to the edge, look at where the balloon goes at its farthest point, then shoot when it's over at its other end, and you will get it every time. You can do a swim through vertical walls here. And you go basically straight over to this gold banana. You might need to jump a little to get out of that cage. An inbounds anywhere along here. Really try to conserve your homing ammo. Don't waste shots here. It can be kind of tricky to get that bunch and get in the loading zone at the same time. Did he walk straight? So this room... If you're not used to VC controls by now, you're going to have some problems. So I like to do bunch golden banana than the other bunch. Kinda squawk is always doesn't really turn there. And fairy. Okay, well that's fun guy. Two more levels left, and they're both short. Ooh, okay. I don't think I've done that before. Well 
Welcome to bonus stage. <laughs> Alright, so you wanna start pressing Z before you get the golden banana to not fall the way down like I did in my PB. And go over here, you can use your homing ammo, hit that, or the homing ammo can decide not to hit the switch. And make your way to Aztec. And have a camera flip. And I stayed in Rocket Barrel for picking up that golden banana. And then landed right after picking it up. So Lenki's golden banana in here is where the homing ammo will be useful. Now the homing ammo should home onto the vulture, and this should go a lot faster than if you didn't have homing ammo. Really? Okay, I didn't get a double shot there. But if you shoot one right before it hits the vulture, you can sometimes hit it twice. Make sure you have 17 bananas leaving that area. Now for this, you want to swim through vertical walls on the left wall here, and swim around sort of in the center of this area, then jump, and you'll land in bounds. Let's kill the four clap traps that spawn. Try to get in there where the golden banana is, and you can pick it up right away.
I'm sorry for all the animal abuse. So for this clip, you want to do a full jump, then just aerial at the peak to clip into there. It is possible to jump too high and you'll land on top. So you're pretty much doing like an almost full jump in aerial. And I always do it on the back side of that, but people have said you can do it on the other sides, but I haven't really experimented with that too much. Now it's very easy to make the mistake of forgetting Chunky's uh, bonus barrel over there. So make sure that you're getting that and not just coming straight to the tiny temple when you tag him. So here. I have to throw two oranges, kill those guys, pick up all these bananas, and need to go get the chunky balloon. I didn't hear where Lanky's stuff was. And straight to swim through vertical walls. It's the same wall you swam on with Tiny. To go over here, you want to swim up a little to be above. And line yourself up completely straight. And hold A. And you'll get the golden banana. How much is really cheap, Montana? room is really straightforward. Place the vases on their appropriate spots. Don't get hit. Now DK and back to the Llama Temple. Oh, okay. Let's 
So I'll hit warp two right away. Go up these stairs. You can do a moon kick here if you're good, but I'm not good. If you're not at 75, you can get some of those bananas. Tiny. If you're familiar with NLE, you may be wondering why I'm not getting skewed in here, and uh, because it's just not faster, this specific route. Ooh. I've never been damage boosted onto there before, that's cool. Uh, this balloon I'm about to shoot can be tricky. I try not to get seen by the claptrap, and then I just shoot from here. Kill both of these guys. And after you kill the second one, a cutscene will start a few seconds later. You want to try to overlap that with this. So I didn't have to watch the cutscene of the vines coming down. Uh, I'll probably have a link in the guide for... Ooh, did I? I missed one. Dang. I'll hopefully put a link in the guide for the solution to that. But it's not that bad to memorize. Hard to play well for five hours straight, especially in a game like this. I think this is the last of the turtle mini games. Want you have one more chance to ponder what they mean. Okay, so, what I'm about to get is the most likely thing for someone to forget in a 101% run. Kiwi's probably forgotten this five times just himself, and every single runner always forgets the stupid blueprint. So, use Warp 2 right here to get Lanky's blueprint. Do not forget this if... I have to see any more people forget this, I will lose it. Like, just get it. Stop forgetting it, people. Not that hard to remember. Oh, 
Why are he's right next to me? So this is a ledge clip. It's pretty easy on these steps. Ooh, okay. So you want to inch your way forward to be able to shoot these balloons from out of bounds. Okay, that should have counted. If you want to be extra safe, I would pick up these three bananas before doing the- That was unavoidable. I would pick up these three bananas before doing the ledge clip, so that if you fall in bounds in there, you can exit enter without having to come back to here. And just, you know, use warp one, warp two with- That was my fault. Use warp one, warp two with Lanky, then resume from here. So yeah, if you're bad at that ledge clip, and bad at not falling in bounds, get those three bananas on the steps first. I guess the rest of Aztec is honestly really straightforward. I don't know if there's really anything else to talk about. As you just you're doing this room with Lanky, then Tiny's, then Chunky's. Welcome to bonus stage. This is a one-time thing of me commentating like this. I will be highlighting this run and uploading it to my YouTube channel, so when people are learning 101, they can use this run as a sort of a reference for learning. Since there really is no video tutorial right now for learning 101, so this is the next best thing over a full tutorial. I'm starting to lose my voice because I never talk this much when I'm streaming. I've been losing it since Factory. I haven't really- I felt the same since then. It's not really getting worse. Okay, so... Can't go a stream without somebody saying, Get out, scared them as a kid? There's- there's some things that in every single 101 run, somebody will always say something along the lines of to get out scared them as a kid. There, I've never gone a single run where someone didn't say that. It's just funny. So on N64, you have to use Mini Monkey to take this very picture, but on VC you can do that. I forgot to split for training barrels this run, so who knows how they were. Clip. 
I am obviously bad at these. Okay, so I guess I should mention that I already fought this boss in the first visit to Aztec, but I got key 5 instead. I don't even know if I mentioned that. And in order to get key 2, we need to fight the boss the regular way. So we wait until now to do that. See, this is why I didn't want to do a full tutorial, because I'm leaving so many things out, and I would just feel guilty uploading like a full tutorial where I don't explain everything. So this just lets me get away with being lazy, not talking about everything that I could. Who found the Dogadon Quick Kill? Ah, uh, it was a guy on YouTube. I feel like he had Yoshi in his name, maybe. Oh, okay. He just did it on accident. It was March of 2015. Aim, please. Aim. Adam was not the first to find it, no. Who got the first world record in 101? Wasn't it Wouter? Is that his name? Uh, actually. I was the very first to get 101 on the North American version of DK64 for the Wii Virtual Console. Because I did a Let's Play the day it was released and finished it in seven and a half hours. Welcome to bonus stage. Wow, that was pretty fast. Losing time from that ledge clip. Okay, final level. Ooh, I, okay, I pressed B a little too late there, so I took fall damage. Normally I would aerial. Yeah, too bad this is spliced. Alright, there's lots of stuff in Japes. Starts out pretty easy, just like use bonus barrel, but it will pick up very quickly. Well 
welcome to bonus day. Yeah, shoutouts to Tudos for giving me quality options and making me do extra work, splicing this together. Here's the warp 2 that hopefully you hit in Jeeps 1. Now for these bananas on the outside here, I like to get, I think, 4 around here. Yeah, so I go 1, 2, 3, 4, backflip. And this is called bridge clip. I was a little too far forward. Gotta get in the right spot, backflip, and then I tap up a little, which lets me land on the bridge. If you get some sort of thing where, like, sliding on the edge, you can mash B and to make it up the rest of the way. Uh, I will be attempting the cartwheel jump into the minecart to skip slowing down the conveyor belts, but. I recommend going over and doing this the intended way by hitting the switch to slow these down and open up the gate. Oh, this jump isn't that bad. So that gate would not be blocking if you went and hit the switch. Uh, I guess I'll show off the lag reduction strats for N64. Just look backwards. But please, do not fail the, this because you're doing lag reduction strats. It's more important to get 50 coins than reduce lag in here. On VC, don't, you don't really even need to look back. When I hear that guy is when I look around to flip this lever and get some coins here. Make sure you're looking back here, though. In order to dodge these guys, you need to be looking back. And then, for the rest of the way, I would look forward. Even on N64. But again, don't do the lag reduction strats. It's gonna make you lose. And I tried timing it on BC, and I did not notice any significant time save from looking backwards. Alright, so now... I like to kill this beaver, shoot this switch. Make sure you get all three bananas here. Should, yeah, 52 is right. Ten more bananas on these two trees. Ooh, okay. 
And now this is the skew section. So skew is a trick that I could make a 30 minute video on. This is gun skew. Taking out my gun, going over here, swimming over the cage, diving. I listen for like three gloops there. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, yeah. I don't- I, I cannot explain Skew in this short amount of time, so I'm sorry. If I have not in the near future and you are watching this, please bother me into making a full Skew tutorial, because I could talk about what to do there for literally 30 minutes. Anyway, I talked about the Skew rules and Fungi, but no regular jumps. You can do cartwheel jumps like I just did there. You can backflip, but no regular jumps. Be really careful in those bananas. It's really easy to slide off and lose cue. Remember, no regular jumps. If you accidentally climb a tree, you can jump off of the tree just fine. Don't worry about that. Uh, Lanky can jump out of a rang stand, so I'll be showing that off here. It's useful to get. So I like to go down a little, then jump. If you try to jump from the very top, you'll take fall damage, so that's why I walk down a little bit first. Then you walk to the left here until you fall into the tunnel, then use work floor. And no holding A while landing either. Very important. And also, don't use A to put your gun away. I don't know if that's exactly how it works. But be careful when you're putting your gun away. I know Tudos had some issues with losing skill while putting his gun away. Maybe use B. Don't use B either, I just use C up and the C buttons. Also, be very careful with your long jumps. I probably wouldn't long jump at all when I'm learning. Maybe it was B, not A. It was whatever button to exit C up is what I meant. Not actually putting your gun away. It's when you leave C up, use the C up button. Don't use any other button. Yeah, be careful with your long jumps. You need to press Z before A. If you press them at the same time, you will lose skew. Careful about this little ledge here. You can lose skew on it if you try long jumping on it while you're like. I don't know. Just be careful. Uh, if at some point. Hmm. I'm not gonna talk about all the skew backups. If you lose skew after getting Lanky's Cage Golden Banana, it probably wouldn't be worth it to get skew again. Instead, you just do all the stuff the intended way. Like, if you don't have skew going into that area, that's fine. You can just use Mini Monkey to get all that stuff. So right here, you can do a kick slide jump aerial to get out of bounds on that torch. This really doesn't save that much time. I don't even do it every run if I don't feel like it. I usually try to kill those guys because it's near impossible to dodge them. So that switch over there is the only one I'm hitting. I did not hit the first switch, but you have to hit that switch in order to leave this area. And again, this out of bounds, I don't think it saves more than 10 seconds over the intended way.
Wow, it's the Hipster420. I gave you a shout out earlier. I said if you fail the rabbit race, you should go watch Hipster's PB to see the backup. Okay, don't fail this minigame whenever you do. It's really easy. Just dodge it. There's no written instructions for this one. Just don't get hit. hold down there to land in the chunky barrel again. Make sure you get all four bunches and the gold banana. Get the gold banana. Okay then you do a jump aerial at full speed into this, preferably going straight to clip. And you walk over to the ram view wall, you back up a little. This is a very tight void zone. You do not want to go too far out of bounds. Like, I was being very careful there to stay close to inbounds. If you void out there as Hunky Chunky, there is a swim through vertical walls backup to get back into this area. Just by swimming under where Diddy's Splat is. These balloons are like halfway in the ceiling. You don't need the bunch under the rock. I'm majoring in math and statistics. Great con. <laughs> Math professor says good choice. Okay, if I'm ever homeless without a job, I will call you up, Awesome Turtwig, and move to New Jersey. What? Okay, so this room has some text that can potentially softlock your game. Easy, safe way to do this is just get that text right there. If you try to avoid the zone where the text happens, you can potentially soft lock your game if you don't know what you're doing. And press your mash your C button to play your instrument as soon as possible. And shoot this balloon before the gold banana spawns. And final fairy. Hello, Leland Lanes. Welcome to the stream.
Ooh. <laughs> I was not looking where I was going. Okay, I... You're swimming directly underneath where the boulder is. That... That was kind of sketchy. Need both those bunches. And try to shoot those right in a row so the cutscenes overlap. Oh. I didn't realize I put my gun away. Mm, apparently there's some weird jumping thing you can do here to get out early, but I don't know. We need backup chunky bananas. There's some singles around there, but those are in the route. And you can try to do a dance skip here. Okay, I missed. Alright, and it's O banana time, so uh, chances are if you turned in extra blueprints in Galleon, your gold banana count has not been the same as mine during this run. But now after Snides here is where your gold banana count should line up. Do not forget Lanky's Bunch here. This should be 75. I will honestly be shocked if I do not forget anything in this run. I've been... I've never been this focused on commentary, and this is the least focus I've ever put into my <laughs> speedrun before, so this will be amazing if I remembered everything. And just to end this suspense, I'm not actually on PB pace right now. My PB is 544.21, so I'm just comparing against average splits because it feels nice to be to have green splits. This means I'm doing better than average. Oh, my God. 
Okay, no matter what, you should be at 197 golden bananas after turning in, after turning in DKs. If you are not, you probably missed a blueprint, so you can check in here to see where the blueprint is missing. I, I wasn't checking my gold banana count. Was I at 197? Let me know. You just heard me laugh in the background? Okay. Uh... Do not miss the bunches in here. If you do, there are some faster backups, I think, than doing this again. But... Like, maybe over by the Trough and Scoff, or by Diddy, where you freed him, but yeah, just don't miss those. We need to get to 70 bananas here. Nice game. Welcome to bonus stage. Okay, so yeah, so uh, swimming in this game is fun. You will have to wait and see, Mitsu. 199. Okay, and this is where I usually check my medals, so I'll do that here. 40. Okay, I got them all. Alright, so uh, I'll be doing a swim through shores here. You don't need to do this. You can just shoot the switch if you want. You need to keep mashing B until you are completely under the Banana Fairy Island. Like, about there. Just don't move while you're jumping, because if you jump in that cage, it's, uh, it's a soft lock basically, and you have to quit game to get out. So don't land in there. You can always just shoot the switch if you're afraid of that. And if you got all the fairies, you should get your 201st golden banana right here. And now for K rule. I am not the best at K rule. If you want to watch a good K rule, the best VC one that I know about right now is in Cygna's 101 PB. 
if you want to see the best N64K roll that I know of at least, it's in Tiffany Fruits Any% percent PB. So look at those for optimal K rules. I'm probably going to suck at this, so bear with me. So for DK's phase here, you want to climb up this pull a little, get near the top, and then when the timer hits 48, hold up, go into the barrel, two, three, and fire. There are patterns for how long to wait in the written guide. One, two, three, four. And one, two. And one, two, three, four, five. Diddy phase is by far the hardest, so don't die. You really want to take advantage of Z to hover in this phase. Like to get damage there, and backflip, and you can get in the rocket barrel early. So for the first slide, I don't do anything special, but for the last ones, you try to shoot both at once like that by hovering right next to it. And just like in Creepy Castle where you, you were shooting those balloons through walls, that's what you're doing here. But I missed that one. Yeah, I'm not the best at this. Hello? Okay. <laughs> is this a good run? Uh, this is looking like it will be the third fastest run I've ever done. So if that means anything, it will still be second place on the leaderboard. I don't really call it a good run though, it's just... I mean, it's better than I expected for a tutorial. That's for sure. So for Lanky's phase, I do these in the same order every time, so... Don't even watch mine, go watch the better one. Yeah, <laughs> already messed up. Uh, the baby strats for Lanky Phase are to throw the banana peels on the music pads every time and just play your instrument right away. But that's not fastest because you take lots of damage. But if the banana peel is on the music pad, then he will hit it, even if you're on it too. Like right here, I'm being so slow, so I'm just going to do that. And I might get squished. <laughs> okay, that worked.
Optimally, I would be done by now. I used to be good at lanky phase, but then I didn't practice it for months. So tiny phase is like 30 seconds faster on VC, I think, than N64. Because it lags a lot. And if you're on N64, you want to do your best to reduce lag. And I'll, I'll do lag reduction strats in here just because. But on VC, you don't really need to worry about that at all. You can do whatever. No, I will not be doing another run after this. So first lag, you want to get up on these posts. Try to, yeah, see up. And just look up. <laughs> I'm bad at counting, so I have to go out early. So where to stand for this is is in the written guide. So that was two one two two one. That means you stand under the second toe on the first, and the second and the second and the first. Apparently that was confusing for some people who were trying to read the guide. I'll do N64 strats this time. So, two, one, two. I can't, the, two's, the toes move so the toes move so fast. I can't even do lag reduction strats. I don't even remember what to do now. It's fun. Okay, I'll just do this part normally, how VC normally would. So it's two, three, four, three, four. So two, three, four, three, four. Two, three, three, four, four. Four, three, four, three, four. Hopefully that's clear. But to see a proper lag reduction strats, please go see TJ's any percent PB. Tiffany Jane and Tiffany Fruit are the same person. Will I get a 545? I have three seconds of buffer room. Oh, 
Alright, so for Chunky Phase, you can't just run straight for the switch, or else you'll get hit. Kinda need to do a little spin stall. Then I like to long jump. And I think fastest is to go red, 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 red. Okay, but I can't even hit the switch. I'll be going to yellow next because I was slow there. Wow, I was so slow I didn't even make that cycle. For that third one you need to punch right away. I've already choked this chunky phase. So in the case that you backflip like that, you need to see up and look forward again. Is that even gonna- okay, that still hit. 54601, I suck. So, there you go, that was your 101% commentated tutorial video guide. I don't even know, someone- what should I call this? I don't even know what to call this. It was kinda tutorial, kinda not. It was an actual run. live tutorial. So uh, I will upload this probably in a few days. Until then you have the past broadcast to watch. It'll take me a little bit to piece the different parts together since this was in three parts. Hopefully this will be helpful for you guys for whoever wants to learn one on one. Uh, yes. Yeah, so my real PB is 544.21. Uh, if you need splits, my splits are on splits.io. Ah, uh, since this wasn't like a PB or anything, I guess I'm not gonna bother waiting for the 101 credits. I know I got 101 because I checked, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for. Those of you that asked meaningful questions and helped me along the way with this.